Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. <laughs> I love how it fades out to one, 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 uh, 11, 11. <laughs> Namaste and welcome to In 5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from In5D.com. And for the next few hours, we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Tonight is our annual In 5D New Year's Eve extravaganza. And tonight's show has a theme of Out with the Old and In with the Now. We have an amazing night planned for everyone with lots of friends who will be calling in all throughout the night. So to help me kick off tonight's show, I'd like to bring in my fellow N5D radio hosts, Michelle Walling and Helene Lipson. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi, Hi Greg. <laughs> Happy New Year's Eve, our last day of, this, of 2014. Woohoo! Yes, I'm really Woo! looking forward to this. <laughs> Welcome, Helene. Oh, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I love In5D.com, and I love being part of the In5D team. So Aww. you guys are the perfect people to celebrate the new year with. How exciting this is going to be. I can't wait to get the show kicked off. As a matter of fact, speaking of which, guys, we have a lot of guests that will be calling in all throughout the night, and our first guest is already <laughs> right there right now. And without further ado, we're going to bring him in. Uh, uh, and online, we have uh, Jim Delacoli, astrologer, uh, better known as Panther Jim, on uh, YouTube. Jim, can you hear us? Yes. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year's to you, too. Uh, do you have any uh, New Year's resolutions coming up? Uh, I'm going to try and let uh, all of 2014 go away and... Uh, <laughs> Bring some alchemy to my life in 2015. <laughs> That's a good one. Some alcohol. No. <laughs> yeah, alcohol. There you go. <laughs> alcohol me. Hey, Jim. It's good to hear your voice again. Oh. Welcome back. Uh, it's, it, well, it's good to uh, be back, and it's good to uh, talk to you as well. Well, for those who don't know Jim, who uh, this may be their first time, I've interviewed Jim. He's been my number one guest. I've interviewed a lot of people, and you know, I've had him on the show more times than anyone else. I think the second most person I've had on was uh, Jordan Maxwell. So, Jim, you're number one. You're you're above well, Jordan Maxwell. I don't think that'll ever happen, Greg, but I, I enjoy you. Uh, I think you and I click, and I love being on the show, so I appreciate the invites. Oh, no doubt. You know, um, to me, you're like you're – like, uh, a soul brother to me. I know that if you were to live here in Sarasota, you know, you and I would just be best friends hanging out and shooting the shit all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and it would be just ease and fun the whole time too. So definitely. So uh, let's, let's jump right into it. Um, I'd like to know what you see uh, in 2015 and beyond, uh, according to the astrological okay. charts. I, um, I looked up a lot of stuff for you, Greg, so I think we can fill this 30 minutes uh, with a lot of good information. I, um, awesome. I, you know, one of the things that stuck out glaring to me is we're in a, uh, and I look back, and I got to 1950, but it, it hadn't happened. We're in a new moon cycle of zero degrees. So from um, the end of October through, it's going to be February of, of course, 2015, we're going to have four new moons, and new moons in astrology are, the time to create and begin and let the universe know that, you know, you're ready for expansion and to move forward into, into new territory and zero degrees of any sign uh, is about beginning. So we've had a very rare four new moons. We started with Scorpio, Sagittarius, just had the Capricorn on the solstice, um, and then we're going to go to Aquarius, and these are all zero degrees new moons. And so for me, I'm looking at that uh, coupled with we're going to have three planets for the majority of 2015, 
um, three slower moving planets and fire signs. And to me, that's all about alchemy. Think of what you know a flame does to a log and how it transforms it from one physical form to another. And so, you know, I look at us and the opportunities for us to begin anew from the individual standpoint and to change how things are, I think never really could have been, could be any better than what we're getting ready to see. But we're going to face adversity in that as well. So I think, Mm -hmm. you know, if if we can all just understand this right now, we're in the moment um, and then take what 2015 is going to offer us. And and we're going to have to fight to fight. Don't get me wrong. But I think that there's going to be a tremendous opportunity for us all. I know that you and I have talked about in the past about Pluto and Capricorn, which is there until 2023, start, mm-hmm. entered there in 2008. And uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, Pluto is known as the destroyer, and it tears down basically everything that's not in humanity's best interests. And it gives us the opportunity to rebuild it in humanity's best interests. So right on schedule in 2008, actually, let me preface this by going back. The last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions in Absolutely. the 1700s so Absolutely. let me fast forward again to uh 2008 what did we see we saw a collapse of all the banking systems uh, all the tons hundreds of banks collapsed except for the two big to fail banks and uh but mm-hmm. that was right on schedule and uh right now what i'd like to actually ask you a little about and i think we touched on this once before is where do you see the whole pluto and capricorn thing apexing and then where things start to get better yeah, I, I look at um, whenever I see a planet transit through a sign, which, as you said, in in uh, 2008 we had Capricorn host Pluto. Um, I look at the way I then separate it into each each sign's 30 degrees, and I separate that then zero to 10, 11 to 20, and then 21 to 30. And and what we're going to see in in 2015 is Pluto transiting through that middle sector of of Capricorn. So it's going to be it'll start out in January at 13 degrees. Um, and then it'll end up pretty much where it started at the end of the year because Pluto moves so slow at, you know, 15, 16 degrees. And that tells me that, um, all right, we're halfway there. We, we've been – Pluto likes to reveal um, all the hidden and the dark, and so then it destroys what's good, what we choose, and, what you know, what is lasting. Um, it destroys the bad, and then the good can emerge, and we can really, like, hone in on that. And that's what I see 2015 being is – us really honing in on all that's gone on and, and fixing the major issues that can't sustain themselves. And, and we know what they are, and we're, or they're being revealed, and everybody's seeing them, and that's why the chaos, I think, is just you know just expanding as, as we've got late into 2014 and then we get into 2015. So the opportunities here are going to be for us to, as you said, destroy what is, doesn't last and to really start making a difference and, and putting the, the groundwork in to where it is we want to take this. You know, we're already starting to see that within the uh, banking system. That's collapsing. Uh, Religion Mm -hmm. is falling to pieces. Uh, Governments, we're seeing uh, revolutions all throughout the world. Uh, You know, it's the writing's on the wall for people who are paying attention. And to think that there's no correlation between everything that's going on and astrology, you have to be crazy because it's everything. Whatever is being dictated above is being dictated below. Yes, that's exactly right, and and that is astrology at, at its core. Um, and I, I, you know, I really see Greg. I think the the financial system finally will collapse this year, and uh, mm-hmm. it had to be a slow process. I think it had to be um, understood how just how evil it was, and and so I'm looking for 2015 to really ramp up. And and with these slower moving planets and fire signs, uh, we're definitely going to see war by between March and then maybe. Uh, between sometime in March all the way through till uh, the sun and uh, gets into Leo, which will be late July. Mm-hmm. So you can watch those months to really ramp up. Unfortunately, I agree with you uh, that there, you know, and we've seen it time and time and time again. Whenever a country gets into disparity, they turn to war to resuscitate yes. the economy. Um, mm-hmm. And you're, you know, right now here in the United States, it's probably as bad as it can get. You know, we're looking at places like Detroit that are turning into a, basically a third wor- world city. Uh, out in California, mm-hmm. they're they're uh, desperate for water. Although they did have rain recently, you know, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. you know, the, the signs are on the wall, and uh, you know, people have to start paying attention. We are going to see that collapse, and I, I I do believe it. I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. The collapse of the of the dollar. But um, I did post something on In5D, and I don't know if you heard about uh, that 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 woman Karen Hudes. 
uh, the World mm-hmm. Bank whistleblower, mm-hmm. and uh, she she was talking about how there's already a system in place that will replace the uh, current fiat currency uh, with with uh, an actual gold backed currency, and she's trying to get all the uh, rest of the nations to comply. And as far as I understand, it looks like it's a it's a go. So that might be it might only be a very temporary transition period for everyone listening where we get out of this fiat currency and move into a gold backed currency. But as you and I both know, you know, we're still economic slaves to the system as long as, you know, there is that kind of currency. So, you know, ultimately we need to w- move into a, you know, a, a kind of civilization where we don't need currency at all. Yes. And, and that's where us as individuals with these, three zero degrees new moons and these slower moving planets and fire signs we must our spirit must come alive and we really must find the purpose and and the why that we're here and this is the year to do it i mean there's never been a better time you and i've talked about that about where these planets have aligned themselves for us to really as an individual to emerge Mm -hmm. so uh what else do you see going on in 2015 and beyond you know, um, because uh, Saturn is going, it's actually uh, just uh, barely got into Sagittarius. Uh, you know, Saturn's a planet I follow. It's a 29-year cycle, and it's going to go into Sagittarius and then come back out, go retrograde back into um, Scorpio and then uh, into Sagittarius uh, to stay in September of 2015. So I'm looking for outer space um, maybe discoveries to really ramp up. I know we started to see that, but I'm I'm really looking for that to uh, expand. Um but I don't think it'll really like um take hold till September of 2015. And I'm also looking for um the human spirit to rise around then. I think, you know, Saturn's a call to duty and I'm looking at Sagittarius and all of its energies and everybody out there needs to study Sagittarius and figure out just what that that energy and that time is about and take for from their own perspective that type of energy and, and then just emerge with, with that. Because Sagittarius is where we come up with our own philosophy. It's where we're unique and how we understand things. And, and so I'm looking for opportunities for us to really advance and understanding not only space, but understanding each other and ourselves and, and just, you know, what we need and what we truly don't need and, and use that Pluto and Capricorn and and really seriously look at what what's good, what can last, and, and what's not good, and what doesn't need to happen. Um, and I think we're going to do that, and so I'm hoping that's what happens this year. Mm-hmm. Now, Saturn, <laughs> it's interesting. We uh, just got through uh, basically Saturnalia, which um, other people may call Christmas. Um, <laughs> right. And that, uh, for those who don't know that that history, it was, uh, Saturnalia is was actually predated uh, Christmas, and it was a week long of debauchery and lawlessness and everything else. And eventually, apparently, the uh, you know because all, every Christian holiday is celebrated on a pagan holiday that preceded it, uh, they tried to uh, win the Christians over, or, or actually the, the the Christians tried to win the pagans over by telling them that they could celebrate Saturnalia during Christmas. So um, <laughs> anyway, there's an article on N5D all about the esoteric meaning of Christmas. Um, also, in, in astrotheology, Saturn is known as Satan. So how does that play into uh, everything that's happening? Saturn teaches us our lessons on the physical plane. And I really think that, and this is my personal opinion, that hell here is on Earth because we're in the physical form. And so we must learn about um, caring for the physical form. And it does begin, it does have a middle point and an end point. And, and so I think that the, the Saturn and the, the, the Satan uh comparisons are are spot on in the fact that you must learn duty and responsibility um but that's to a certain point once you understand it and understand why i think then it relieves its uh you know the satan side or evil side um but a lot of us and we're at the time right now where because saturn is you know up into sagittarius that we're finally learning that but a lot of us up to this point have not so you know it's, it's interesting to watch that and watch it unfold now that's why i think that we're going to see some huge uh, opportunities for restriction in 2015, but I think we're going to fight back and, and take back what we know is right and what we know is ours. How long of a time period do you see that this finally happening for humanity? I think it's we're going to have to wait till September. I think it's going to be ugly. It, you know, 2015 will have some ugliness to it up to September, but after that, when Sagittarius is fully 
um, transiting in the sign of, uh, I mean, sorry, when Saturn is fully in transiting the sign of Sagittarius. And I think that's when we're going to see us really start moving forward and realizing that we have more power as an individual than what we thought. And, you know, the opportunities will then slowly start to emerge as, as like we talked earlier, Capricorn is going to be in that middle uh, sector of, of uh, I'm sorry, Pluto's going to be in the middle sector of Capricorn. It's really going to show us that we have more power and we have more of a say-so than we thought. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's exciting days ahead. And, uh, you know, for mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who have gone through uh, the the dark night of the soul. And, I, boy, I'll tell you what, I've talked to so many people on the N5D Facebook page. They'll send messages about, you know, I'm go- either going through it or have just gone through it. Does that have any kind of – is that more of a generational thing, or is that just, you know, something that's happening to basically many of those who have awakened? It, it really is. It's a generational thing. You and I have talked about this. Our generation, the early to mid-60s, um, we, we really are coming trying to perfect and, and reveal that, which, which uh, truly doesn't work in nature's um, equation. And then everybody mm-hmm. beneath us, Greg, is – is even more advanced as the slower moving planets each um generation got into a more advanced sign and so we're we're kind of the ones that are screaming out like this we can't do this this isn't right this has to change and so we're bringing all this out and then the groups behind us the generations behind us will will really take what we started and take what we've revealed and and really do something but that's going to be great for humanity as we move forward Mm -hmm. now um you know, for those who are listening that aren't familiar with uh, uh, Pluto Generations, once again, there is a, a an article on N5D. Uh, and just type in, in in the search box in the upper right hand corner, uh, Pluto Generations, and you find out which generation you're in. Uh, Jim and I are both in the Pluto in uh, Virgo generation, mm-hmm. and I have a daughter that's in uh, Pluto in Scorpio generation. Which ironically, mm-hmm. uh, she I, it seems that those she's 20 years old, and it seems like uh, you know those kids are going through the dark night of the soul almost at the same time as their parents are. So it's kind of funny to see that correlation. Yes, and and that was uh, – I, I really enjoyed the, the work you, you did on um, Pluto going through the signs because, to me, there's nothing more spot on in each of these generations. And, and like us, Greg, we have 20-year-olds, and so you know we know what we're thinking, feeling, and what we went through, but we were watching our kids all the way – you know, from being born to 20, and it's just mm-hmm. amazing how accurate that Pluto, you know, uh, the birth uh, placement of Pluto in the sign, how accurate it is and how, you know, just how eerie that, that what they go through, it, it's, you know, you could just almost describe it before they even it even happens. <laughs> I know, and, that, and that's the beauty of astrology, because it shows mm-hmm. you the writing on the wall. You can look at your retrograde planets on your birth chart, and see what you were basically incarnated, what 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 challenges you you basically incarnated with, for yes. whatever retrograde planets you have. Now, uh, what what planets are retrograde on your birth chart? I unfortunately have Saturn retrograde, <laughs> and which explains yeah, your fascination for Saturn. <laughs> exactly okay. that, and it pulls me under sometimes, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. But I yeah, I have retrograde, and it's in the first house, so. You know that's been a um, a quest of mine then to figure out all right what's a, what about Saturn what about the individual and you know what can they overcome and where are the limitations so um, that's that's one of my main retrograde planets has been a thorn in my side so mm-hmm. um, I, and that's for those listening once again that's another thing that I do cover on n5d.com you can check out what each one of your planets in retrograde means now. I was like one of the lucky ones. I, di- I didn't have any retrograde uh, planets, which is, is pretty rare. But some people can have, what is it, up to seven planets retrograde? Is it? Yeah, How I many? mean, uh, late, later this year, there's, we're going to have five planets in retrograde late July. And, and so, you know, I look for that to be, that's why I look at September, I look for that to be a chaotic time um, where, you know, in astrology, retrograde is a slowdown of the, from our, our perspective here on Earth as we're looking into the, sky, the heavens. It's a slowdown of the planet, so we can kind of work on it a little more um, and and figure it out to a deeper, or, you know, a, a level that we can understand it. And so, if you have five, six, seven planets retrograde, you're, you're that the, the life really is about you know slow it down and and take your time and learn the lessons. Everything's going to come, you know, with a lot of efforts going to have to be put forth to uh, re- really figure things out. Mm-hmm. Now. 
I know also anyone that has, for example, if you have five, six, seven, even if you have two or three planets retrograde, mm-hmm. don't look at that as a bad thing. Look at it as an opportunity. This is what you incarnated with. This is your time stamp, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, wherever you were born, your exact location, the minute, time, second, and as far as I'm concerned, the millisecond determines everything that's going to be planned out in your life. And uh, this is an opportunity for you to you know, look at these retrograde planets what they mean, and how you can basically work that into your life in a positive way and come out victoriously. Absolutely, and and that, that just says, that just says, hey, do the work here, and then you know you, you'll become the master. Is really what what that says. And so you're exactly right. Just take your time and do mm-hmm. the work. Now, Helene, I, aren't you have a Mercury retrograde, don't you? I have both. I, I have Saturn retrograde and Mercury retrograde. <laughs> wow. I do. Yeah. Well, it's and okay. So, uh, you know, I, I totally agree with the retrograde uh, thinking, by the way. That's how I think about that's how I think about things, too, when I look at charts. And and uh, what does it mean, Jim, when somebody has mercury retrograde? Born well, I, you know, I, I, I look at um, communication then, you know, because mercury does rule that, of course. But whenever I see somebody with mercury retrograde, what I look at is, it's very important for them to – I think they're trying to understand what's my side in, when I'm uh, communicating and then what's the other person's side. And so you, you want to make sure you take your time and then that the message that gets passed and then understood. It's almost like you said when you're talking to somebody and, and uh, trying to get a point across, it's almost like you, you need to almost ask them, all right, now what did I just say? And, and you know, how did you feel or what did you understand? So you both can figure that out. But, I, again, it's it's mastering of the, that, that planet itself. And, and Mercury just doesn't rule communications alone. There's many other things that rule, like the electric system and the body and how, how you pick things up and your your senses and your ability to understand. So all those things are affected as well as, you know, the communication side. So um, it's almost like the individual picks up everything. Um, as they go through life, but they don't understand if it's theirs or somebody else's. They don't understand why, and, and so they spend their life figuring that out. You know, they're going to perfect that that whole part of life. That's a very possible. That, that's good. That sounds that sounds about right. I have to say, you know, as you were talking about um, September of 2015, mm-hmm. that is the time of the last blood moon. Isn't there going to be like a blood moon that's on the 15th of um, April in 2015 and then the last blood moon is something like the 29th? My question is, I mean, notice how the blood moons are also following a lot of the other things. Everything seems to be connected. Yes. Do, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about with these blood moons that I've been reading about? Absolutely. And, and you know, the eclipses are following those as well. And, you know, we'll be experiencing total eclipses, and they're going to move from Libra, Aries, into Pisces, Virgo. And that's going to just follow right into what it is where, you know, the transformation or the the, the um, catapulting of the individual that we've been talking about. And that, they talked a lot about the wars and the blood moons, um, and, and I don't disagree with any of that, but I do think – because I study astrology, that we've got a, you know, we we've talked a lot about Pluto and Capricorn, and then the squaring of Uranus and Aries with Pluto and Capricorn, and uh, it's about it's time to change. We can't go on, and we can't go, you know, it's it's got to change now, and so we're all looking at that, and all these moons and all these eclipses and all these planets and, you know, really critical uh, uh, cardinal signs where we have to do something about it. It's just all lining up perfectly. It's just it's amazing how all this works and just how effective it is. Now I'm looking before, forward to it. I am looking forward to a you know a beautiful positive change. I mean I'm sure a lot of a lot of our listeners are so this is good news, even if it's going to be a little bumpy in getting there. I I I think that. And this is how I, like, um, in the groups I have around and then the people's charts I've been reading, because everybody's feeling this. And it's it's like I tell them that we really need to go through the pain so we don't forget it. So I don't think we want to miss a thing, because I think if we go through that pain and that suffering to that nth degree, that we'll make sure that everything gets handled this time. We don't want to miss anything. Like in, in, 19, in 1776, 
you know, when we created the country, I think we missed a few things. And we don't want to do that this time, so we need to go through that process all the way through it and walk through that pain, walk through that ugliness um, so we can remember it, and then we pass that on. And then we go to the good or the light side. And that's where I think we're headed. I think that's what 2015 is about, us finally feeling like we got this. We were on our way, you know. <laughs> I like that thought. I like the thought of the Boston Tea Party. I just say, we're not paying the taxes anymore. We're dumping this tea in Boston Harbor. Forget it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> now, a lot of visual. people, I, I, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people, and they I've recently posted this article. It's called uh, "Remind Me Again: Why Did I Incarnate to This Shithole?" And uh, yes. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people are could relate to that because they see all the yes. crap that's being thrown at us right now. And you know, all of us can relate to that. You know, everything out there is basically either fear, pro- fear, or propaganda, or a combination of both. Um, that you know, if you're listening. Right now, you know, this, once again, is your opportunity to, number one, face the fears and eliminate them. And number two, you know, to move forward uh, in, make, in, in your spiritual progression. So, you know, just try yes. to look at everything with a, with a positive, optimistic uh, view and everything will be okay. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that, well said, Greg. Well said. Thank you. Now, a lot of people in this genre are talking about the year 2017. Now, I don't know if you prepared <laughs> that far beyond but um, for the show for this, and maybe mm-hmm. that's what we can talk about next week, which I'll <laughs> mention a little later. But um, okay. a lot of people are talking about 2017 being this magical year of something really big that's going to happen. Do you see anything yes. happening in that year? Well, guess where Saturn goes in 2017? It goes into Capricorn, and it's going to be mm-hmm. there with Pluto. So... Mm. And as I watched that, what a party! Years, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Satan and was really, a I, I see what <laughs> exactly, and and so I see what's happening. What happening? What happens in 2017 is we're gonna get the point where the people that were in control, because Pluto showed us what they did, how they did it, why they did it, and just how evil they were in their their quest to get what they wanted. Um, when 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 Saturn comes back home to it's it's. Uh, sign in Capricorn and Pluto's there. I think that the lessons then and the the everything turns on the the people who have been in power that have screwed this thing up, and that's then our opportunity. But I think we have to now take that and just kind of look forward to 2017 as being the time that you're going to get your due. You may not get it now, but it's coming. And in 2017, I think's when all that unravels. How exciting! I am so. Yes. Pumped up for everything that's going to be coming our way, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because we know in the end we win. Yes, and it, you know, you talked about fear, and, and really if, if we can all work on, and I think that's what Pluto can teach us the most here, because Capricorn likes to have rules, structure, you know, um, be very rigid, and don't think outside the box. All those things happen with the sign of Capricorn. Pluto is showing us just how fear-based we become, and just how detri- detrimental that is to, uh, or in restricting that is to the soul. And I think, you know, this, we're, I mean, you and I, Greg, we've talked about this. We, we're done with that. We, we understand that what's going on. We understand to the nth degree of why. And so we're breaking free and we're, dry, we're those people are coming with us. And uh, we may not be out front, but we're in that front group and they're coming. And, and so was all we got to do is kind of think 2017 is when all this thing's going to, you know, it's gonna. We're gonna start fixing, truly fixing it. But this is the year that we have to emerge, and so I think you're gonna mm-hmm. start seeing that. Very good. All right. Well, I'd like to also announce. Um, a lot of people know that I've been on a hiatus from N5D Radio for a while. I've been uh, reformatting uh, N5D to get it to where it looks right now today, and uh, I've been working a lot on my other website, Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit. dot com. But uh, what I'm going to be doing, though, is I'm going to be getting back into the uh, uh, radio scene again. And I'd like to announce right now that Jim has already agreed to come back on N5D Radio uh, this upcoming Monday on January 5th. And we're going to really get deep in, into uh, everything that we just talked about and more. So uh, definitely tune back to uh, N5D Radio uh, for Jim Delacoli on uh, January 5th, 2015. Jim, w- would you uh, like to tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, um, YPI2012.com is my website. 
you can uh, get me through YouTube at Panther Gym 1995. Uh, I try to do the new and full moons there. Um, keep listening to Greg. He does so well. Uh, he's doing the right. He's doing everything that, in my opinion, is right, spot on. So follow that. Follow him, and hopefully you follow me in that path because I'm I'm tagging along with him because I believe in him. <laughs> so. Um, I appreciate that. And brother. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you uh, asking me to come on. It's it's an honor. I think the world of you. And, ladies, I hope uh, you all enjoy your evening tonight. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. You. Happy New Year, Jim. Happy New Year to you. And thanks again. Happy New Year. Thank you, Jim. Take, Take care, care, brother. Um, bye-bye, guys. Right. Happy New Year. Bye now. All right, folks, that was uh, Jim Delacoli, uh, Panther Jim, on uh, YouTube. And uh, I'll tell you, you know, we're looking at – we're looking at something really big coming up here, and a lot of people are talking about 2017. What What is it that you guys have heard about 2017? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I have I, all the way back from uh, Dolores Cannon was talking about it. I heard Nellie Benz talking about 2017 being a year of ascension. Mm-hmm. I feel like people are waking up in droves. I say that all the time. Um, I think that people are waking up to who they really are and what their life purpose is supposed to be. I think it's happening now. And I think by possibly by 2017, we will have a big chunk of the collective uh, along with us, bigger than it is now. But uh, I think it's happening. I mean, what do you think, Greg? Don't you notice that, that people are becoming awake and aware more mm. more and more every day exponentially um and here's a great example um i wrote an article gosh originally i wrote it i think in 2010 it's called so your spiritual awakening costs you some friends and i wrote it the day the, the day that i had to unfriend a guy who was my best friend since we were 6 years old in school and uh it hurt to do that um, because I unfriended him because he was belittling my friends about spiritual stuff in public, you know, on my, on my Facebook page. Now this guy had been a, uh, the best man in my marriage to my daughter's mother. And um, we've known each other for gosh, over 40 some odd years. And to have to do that, it, it, it hurt. But uh, recently, you know, we, we've made amends. We, there was a, a friend of ours who had passed away and uh, I had contacted him about that. And, uh, you know, we've since became friends again on Facebook. And uh, my other website, BodyMindSoulSpirit.com, he actually made a comment on there saying, this is a great website. I've learned a lot from it. So, you know, somebody who I thought was previously unreachable, <laughs> and, and a lot of people that are listening, you can relate to this as well through your parents or, you know, older siblings or, you know, older friends or whatever, you know, you're seeing that change that's happening right now. And it's, it's happening on a huge scale. And honestly, I don't know what to attribute it to. It could be a lot of the things that I talked about. And uh, there's an article that I wrote called the uh, cosmic wild card. It could be the Schumann resonance rising. It could be the galactic super wave, photon influxes, could be anything, but it doesn't matter what it is. It could be the astro astrological alignments. doesn't matter what it is. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. What about it you, is. Michelle? Well, um, from from what I was hearing about 2017, um, it's time that humanity will have had the chance to um, spread the word and wake up with the energies coming in and at least be able to return, um, have the gifts returned to them that we had before this fall in consciousness, you know, to be able to read our own Akashic records through our DNA uh, in ourselves and to be able to um, speak telepathically to each other. I mean, you know, we've been really working on ourselves um, for a long time and the energies have really been um, coming fast and, and waves and we've really gone along. I mean, if you look back at the whole year, you know, you're not the same person that you were at the beginning of this year. We have all grown uh, tremendously. And so I think that by the year 2017, hopefully we will have, um, you know, some of us who have really um, done the work on uh, clearing their energies and 
you know, clearing their pineal gland and bringing in the, uh, making the connection with their higher selves and bringing in those energies to um, merge with your higher self and bring more of your soul energy into the present moment now, um, I think uh, we're going to be able to um, to accomplish um, all that we want to accomplish and be able to help those um, who are just waking up or are in the middle of the road as far as haven't completely finished clearing their energies, but they're making room and getting ready to completely in- integrate um, their, you know, more of their higher self energy. So that's what I hope for. And, of course, you know, it may happen before then. Um, it depends on, uh, you know, how hard humanity as a whole works. Uh, so that's what I see for 20, 2016, 2017. Uh, as far as 2015 goes, I feel like that I know a lot of people listening um, have had a, a really rough year in 2014. And usually that means that we've done a hell of a lot of clearing. And when we do that, we... Um, we create a space uh, within us which uh, allows us to expand and uh, take in even more light each time we make a huge hurdle over a dark night of the soul or sometimes we get hurt and we have to work through that energy. And, um, you know, this happens over and over again until it's done. And I think that 2015 will be a year that um, we are able to bring in to integrate. It's a year of integration, bringing in more of the energy and being more balanced and being able to bring in the maximum amount to prepare ourselves for what's to come. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Uh, Very, very well said. Um, And I'm sure a lot of our listeners would would agree. Uh, You know, it, it is about, you know, working on yourself and doing a lot of that clearing. And a lot of people, you know, they, they want to take the easy road, but there really is no re- easy road. You got This is something that's a journey within, and you got to take the time to do it. Now, I've been told uh, about some big event that's going to be happening, not in 2017, but more toward 2023, which is the end of Pluto and Capricorn. And at some point, I'm going to, I've, I've mentioned this for about a year or so, I'm going to write an article about it. And uh, even though there's a lot of people waking up, Right now, I, I, I still don't think they're ready for this article. It's uh, uh, pretty eye-opening and very controversial. But, uh, you know, at some, Michelle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. And, you know, I think that um, even though time is an illusion, I do feel like that we have, um, you know, we've, you, we've been able to learn how to follow astrology and follow cycles. And there's basically... Um, but this time thing and this cycle thing is all part of a construct you know, to control humanity and keep us trapped here under this illusion of time. But if we learn how the cycles work, when the cycle ends, I believe that's what you're talking about, a time when a cycle is going to end and it is, it's inevitable that change has to happen. And this may very well be, in my interpretation, the time that, this no becomes uh, this no longer is a prison planet anymore. Mm-hmm. And for those who have a hard time grasping the illusion of time, think about this. And I'm I'm going to be writing an article about uh, about this. It's on my to do list of articles to write. But um, there's been numerous thousands of cases of people being abducted by UFOs, being gone for what seems like hours, and then being right back in their perhaps in their car, if they, even if they were driving. This happened to my sister. Uh, she was driving to uh, this one uh, lake in upstate New York, her and two of her friends, and uh, this huge light came down. The next thing they knew, knew, it was five hours later, and their car was on the side of the road, and they have no recollection of anything happening. It seemed like it was a blink of an eye. That's how time can be an illusion. You can be gone from your physical body for apparently hours, come back within the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. Time, time does not exist. Mm-hmm. Well, and I really would like to talk about um, that a little bit more in the, in, later on in the show. I see we have another guest in the queue, okay. Greg. Uh, you, would you like to bring our, our guest in? I sure would. Uh, folks, I'd like to, uh, to bring on um, 
our good friend, Brad Olson. Brad, welcome to In5D Radio. Hey, guys. Uh, nice to be on. Happy New Year. Hey, Brad. Happy New Year, brother. Hey, Happy is this Happy New Year. Yeah. Hey, Greg and Michelle. Great to hear you guys' voices. <laughs> Thank now, you. We have uh, Helene with us as well, Helene Lipson. Mm-hmm. She's also Hi, one Brad. of our In5D nice to Radio meet you. show hosts. Nice to virtually meet you over the phone, too. Exactly. I'm watching the, uh, I'm watching the final sunset here on the West Coast. I, I'm just a couple blocks uh, from the beach in San Francisco. And the last nice. fading oh. light of 2014 is now upon us. Uh, yeah. Now, for those who don't know, Brad Olson has written several articles for N5D, and he's got a great sense of humor. I posted a picture of my little 18-foot boat on Facebook, and Brad <laughs> calls it the N5D Yacht. <laughs> and I oh, I can't wait for a ride. <laughs> well, it doesn't fit that many people, but definitely, if you make it to Sarasota, we're going out on it. Definitely. That uh, sounds like a plan. So, Brad, what, are, uh, what do you have planned for tonight? I'm on the guest list to this big party in the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium at uh, the Civic Center in San Francisco called The Sea of Dreams put on by mm-hmm. Anand Salon, and the producer of this event is also uh, a co-producer of the street fair that I uh, am the founder and producer of here in San Francisco called the How Weird Street Fair. So we're like all in oh, one yes. big producer's family and uh, help each other out, support each other out. So I'm going to go to Joe Bullock is the producer who works on How Weird with us, and uh, he's doing a great big gala with DJs in one room and uh, live bands in the main room, including Bright Lights and Glitch Mob and a whole bunch of big names. So that should be fun. Well, absolutely. And you're quite the party king. I mean, you throw a heck of a party with the the How Weird Street Fair every year. And, you know, you're just quite the adventurer. You know, I always see you on Facebook and you're either going skiing or boating or swimming and you know, you just have this grand positive energy about you, and you're like this this tall, you know, a- adventure god. You know, that's what that's the way I see your picture on Facebook is is a big, you know, exuberant adventure god, and and I just love your energy, and um, I love all your books, and you used to actually do uh, you used to write travel books as well, so you have traveled the world and you've planted your energy at very places around the planet and I can just see the bigger picture of what you're doing and I just want to thank you for for everything that you that you're doing because just by doing what you enjoy doing it for a living and um you know being who you are without any pretenses and not caring you know a bit about you know how other people may see you you are you are an example for all of humanity oh well Thank you for the very kind words. And, uh, and so yeah. I was wondering, well, have you written a, a new book recently? Well, as you know, I did uh, Future Esoteric and Modern Esoteric, which are now out and doing quite well. And I was on your show and we discussed it uh, a few months ago with Larry. And mm-hmm. I do have a third book in that series called Beyond Esoteric. And if I may be so... Uh, kind to return the compliment to you and Greg how much you guys have done to increase the consciousness level and bringing this esoteric information and knowledge and wisdom out to the people. I think for you guys, you've both done a great service in what I call a super influencer capacity. That is someone who just (laughs) goes beyond their friends and family and yeah, and reaches out and makes available very valuable information that is not uh, so readily available or hasn't been for thousands of years. Maybe since the Library of Alexandria have we been able to tap into the Internet, like the N5D website, and be able to do a search and come up with so much valuable information. And i got to tell you guys, that website and the stuff you guys have produced have been invaluable in my own research to try to get to the bottom of a lot of this stuff. So my big thanks to you guys and a hats off and happy new year in 2015 and let's keep it all going. 
<laughs> I agree. You know, Greg's been Greg has, you know, he created the whole website and he has been working really hard lately to transfer all the articles from the old website or at least have a a transfer link to the new format. And so if you are looking for something and you can't find it now because the HTML, which is the old programming, uh, if you know if you can't find it now, it may come up as an error. But he's uh, you know slowly transferring them over. It's you know about ten a day, uh, and there is quite a bit already in the in the new format database. Just hang in there, mm-hmm. or send us a private request if you really need that article for something. Just let us know because the information is still there in a in a on his hard drive. It's just not all up yet. So if you need that for any of your research, just let us know. Thank you. I very much uh, may be calling on you for the next one, which is called Beyond <laughs> Esoteric. And uh, yeah, as I said I, on I your interview uh, <laughs> with you, Michelle, we're taking the kid gloves off on this one, including wow. uh, the next five books that I'm publishing with the author Leo Lyon Zagami. He's a best selling yeah. Italian author. And <laughs> like so many great opportunities in my life, it just literally fell into my lap. He saw my website and our catalog of books, and I did another one uh, with Lon Milo Duquette called The Key to Solomon's Key. So it's a very similar tie-in to these esoteric subjects. And the book that I'm editing right now, it's on my laptop, is uh, The Last Pope. The full title is actually Pope Francis, The Last Pope, question mark, on money, masons, occultism, in the decline of the Catholic Church. And this book, too, is taking the kid gloves off, and we're really going to show the Vatican for what it is. And uh, nice. let's just say there's a lot of skeletons in that closet. Well, you know, that you know, you mentioned the Library of Alexandria. It, it never got burned down. Well, it, it did, but the, all the texts that were in there, they were in the Vatican. Everyone knows that, yep. except nobody will admit that, you know. And as for uh, Leo Zagami, um, for those who don't know him, he's a uh, 33rd degree Freemason, so definitely pick his brains. And for those out there who are thinking, oh, no, he's a Freemason, well, you know what? There's a lot of good Freemasons out there, and the best one a lot of people have heard of and the most popular one would be Manly P. Hall. I've listened to many, many, many of his lectures, love him. He's very esoteric, and uh, you know, if you get a chance, definitely check, check out Manly P. Hall, too. So, Absolutely. Brad, I have a question for you. Um, we were talking to Jim Delacoli, an astrologer um, that we've had on N5D Radio uh, many times. And, you know, we were talking about 2015 and, and basically um, clearing uh, energies and being able to expand space to bring in uh, more energy, more of your higher self, more of your oversoul energy. And... You know, um, a lot of people um, are having a really hard time right now because they're um, they're being faced with, um, you know, anger being projected at them, whether it be through relationships or whether it be on Facebook or whether it be, um, you know, from the government or, you know, just just anger. You know, it's there to be cleared. What what kind of advice can you give our listeners for 2015 on on how to deal with those emotions that are that are coming up uh, to be cleared? Sure. Well, as we know, these are very trying times, and a lot of things are seemingly going out of control, and we're on the brink of World War III, and many, many Americans and other people are facing financial hardships, health hardships, goes on and on and on. So through this all, we have a choice to make, and that choice is do we want to be positive about this? and look for the best outcome and focus our energy on that? Or do we just want to break down and not be able to get out of bed and be depressed every day? And of course, my choice is to be positive. And and that's what I do. And that's what I try to project through everything I do. I smile at everybody I walk by on the streets. I give any homeless person I see a little bit of change. It's just these random acts of kindness and being positive about moving things forward in the direction that they need to go, are we going to see some real change? And it really does matter that everybody has the ability to do this. What I mean is, has the choice to stay positive and project 
a winning outcome, not only for themselves and their friends and their family, but for the human race, planet Earth, and all the animals and all the people that are dependent on it. This is it. This is game time right now. And each one of us is really like a, an ambassador to do the very best we can to be positive, and bring people up. So that that's quite simply my advice is through the through it all just try to keep a clear mind, clear body, stay as healthy as you can and be positive and and let's hope the the world doesn't come to an end because it's a beautiful place. <laughs> well, I think that's great advice. Thank you so much, Brad. And um I, you know, go spread some of that love tonight and have a, a wonderful <laughs> time. And I sure would like to have you on again in 2015. Um, and I really enjoy your books. And um, I'm really um, looking forward to, to reading what you have coming up. Oh, you bet, guys. And I look forward to uh, seeing you. Jump in that N5D yacht and come sail out here for Howard <laughs> Street Fair. We'll make you guys yeah. the king and queen. <laughs> I'll do that right now. I'm in my boat right now. <laughs> Start back it up. Through the Panama Canal. Hey, whenever hey, whenever you're ready to drop off another article too, you know, send it over. We'll it. get it up. All right, brother. For sure. And just as a final note, I'm going to be on the uh, History Channel on uh, the third, yeah. which I think is Saturday night, uh, on a show called America on Earth with uh, Scott fine. Walter. We filmed this last summer when I was in Chicago, and it's an episode about the uh, Wobanzi Stone which uh, has been linked to being a Phoenician infant sacrifice site right there on the banks of uh, the Chicago River at Michigan Avenue. So it's going to be a really exciting episode. Uh, People have texted me and said they've already seen me in the trailer. So it looks like I get a little more than my 15 seconds of fame on this one. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Hey, maybe we'll do a Wabonzi Stone uh, article for N5D to catch all your listeners and readers up on that. You know, that would be far out should have told me i could have gave you an n5d t-shirt to wear for that episode (laughs) next time (laughs) next time all right (laughs) would you like to tell our listeners how to get a hold of you yeah well my name is brad olson o-l-s-e-n and that's uh one of my urls bradolson.com but more importantly is ccc publishing to see all the books that i've done and i've set the uh, google book setting at 100 percent readability so anybody can go through any of my books or those that I publish and check out anything they want to see. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. Uh, Esoteric Series is a website, and Esoteric Book Series on Facebook, as well as Sacred Place at 108 Destinations is another uh, Facebook site that I manage. Great. You know, all the usual bat channels. Well, thank you so much for sharing with your en- your energy with us tonight on this New Year's Eve extravaganza, Brad. And you have a great evening. Oh, Take care, you brother. Guys too. I'll talk to you again in 2015. All right. Okay. <laughs> Happy New Year, bro. Happy New Year. Ciao. All righty. It's uh, Brad Olson, folks. Brad Olson. Yeah, I just love Brad. I just resonate. You know, you know how you resonate really strong with Jim. I resonate really strong with Brad and. You know, um, you know a lot of people that I've had on my show, including uh, people like Lance White, mm-hmm. who um, hopefully will be calling in this evening to to say hi to us. And Shortly. you know, Greg, we have a we have a caller um, with an area code of six six one. I I'm see that. Familiar with that, but would you like me to take that call? Yeah, sure. I've I've seen that number before too. Okay. So area code six six one. Welcome to N five D Radio. Who do we have here tonight? Area code six six one with your hand up. You're live on N C B radio. Hi. Hi. Yes, who is this? Can can you hear me? Chris. Yes. yes. Hello, yes, it's Chris Hales. Oh, How are you yes. doing guys? <laughs> Hi Chris. Hi, How are Chris. you? Hi. I'm well. And and look, hello Helene. Hello Michelle. And hello Greg. Hi, Chris. Happy New Year's Eve. Well, I actually, well, actually happy New Year's Day for you. <laughs> yes, yes. It's mm-hmm. actually about nearly 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm in your future by <laughs> probably about 12 or 7, 15, 17 hours. And the uh, future's looking good, actually. I've been listening to some of the conversations you guys have been having. And, yeah, uh, 
amazing year ahead. Amazing year behind, too. It's been really, really quite incredible for everybody. Mm. What were some incredible of the highlights can- of the year? For you. Oh, highlights. Okay. For you. Well, as you may ha- recall, I, I actually met all three of you at the uh, Return to Atlantis mm-hmm. conference last year, mm-hmm. which Greg and Helene, you were, you were the, uh, one of the core organizers for that. My 2014 yeah. really started there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so sure I, I kind of, I kind of class, I kind of class that as the start of my 2014, and <laughs> things that happened to me between there and the end of the year set me up for what happened in in 2014, which was literally, I, ha- uh, you know, you, you you spoke earlier of people reporting their dark night of the soul. I had kind of a, a, a one year. I wouldn't call it the dark night of the soul, but I would call it. Uh, Hmm. Have you ever been on a water ride at a fun park where you actually go down a tunnel and there's sometimes flashes of light and sometimes flashes of dark and you're, and you're spiraling? And then mm. you go whack out into the light. And you, land, you land right in the pool, splash. That's kind of like how 2014 felt to me. Amazing year. Amazing year. Very, very much the internal journey for me. Um, I've been on... I've certainly been on both Helene's show and Michelle's show. I don't think we've actually talked on a show at this stage, Greg, but I'm sure we will at some point. And uh, I I, I have to report that I was ripped completely out of my life at the end of 2013. I stopped working. I went completely inside and literally had the internal apocalypse that a lot of people who you've talked to have actually been referring to, where literally you, you are deconstructed and the universe offers you, you know, a path. And uh, inevitably, you take it. So I'm, I'm not the same internally. I'm not the same externally. It's been a combination of... of intensely personal processes in which I formed a because my, my relationship ended late last year as well the, the relationship that I was having with you guys when I met you guys that ended directly after that conference and I found a, 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 a an amazing new partner uh, around about the start of February this year which has absolutely been a, an incredible part of the journey that I've been on because the internal journey is is really uh, hmm, how, how shall I say mediated by the relationships that you have around you, and whether those people are in fact going to to allow support interact with you in your processes as you emotionally clear. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to to meet someone who was an absolute master at emotional clearing. And she's been a very, very important part of the progress I've been able to make. So uh, at a personal level, incredibly intense year, really, really good year, but at the same time, fairly difficult. Now, I know that the, the, the collective is peppered with people who are absolutely going through their versions of the same experience. And one of the things that's been drawn to my attention about the emotional clearing, the internal shifting, the internal work that you guys are talking about. Uh, the writings of Richard Rudd in the Gene Keys. If anyone hasn't seen that, just have a look at genekeys.com. Um, an amazing piece of work, a re-expression of the I Ching, built uh, partially aspects of it are built on the human design software. And what Richard, sa- what Richard says is that the, um, as we know, there's been many aspects of biblical literature that have been, shall we say, edited. And uh, Revelations presents us with an external apocalypse of mass destruction and uh, an extremely difficult time for humanity. His view is that the apocalypse was only ever going to be internal and it's part of the evolutionary shift that our DNA is actually leading, literally leading the charge on all the way through this process, starting well, really starting back with the harmonic convergence back in the 1988 or so, as far as I understand, but continuing and accelerating up to this moment of now. And it's, Mm -hmm. as you were saying earlier, Greg, it's inevitable that everybody has to do this internal work to emotionally clear, that it's key to the evolution of this collective. 
and uh, it was very interesting to hear the the views of your astrologers from earlier in the show talking about what they see and feel because a lot of these guys feel it as much as see it is going mm-hmm. to is going to actually uh, take place in the collective this year and you know they're seeing they're seeing external events uh, of war they're seeing external events of collapse external events of you know, difficulty and uh, what what the way I would prefer to context that is yes we we will probably see a lot of turbulent external events but I think the real war is going on inside us and at higher levels of the collective out of, out of our sight there's a struggle of light against dark at the very highest levels of the collective which is going on even now and actually is certainly going our way absolutely but here down on the ground um, you know we the conclusion I've come to this year uh, and one of the things that's happened for me personally is that I've come to a very strong realization is that is that um, one of the illusions of separation that we've been presented with in our course through the incredibly deceptive matrix that we live in is is the separation between the spiritual and the physical experience. Well, there is none. Um, there are energy workers that I've I've spent a lot of time with who whose view is simply that we create this reality. We literally project this reality in conjunction with the planet. And although it's it's probably an oversimplification when you look at the shifting that's going on this at this point in time and you consider the fact that everybody's DNA is shifting and what aspect of our physicality is projecting this reality well for my research it's it's actually the DNA our very DNA is actually the, the that aspect of our bodily energy fields is what's contributing to the collective consciousness contributing to the projection of this reality now we're shifting internally and for everybody that sh- starts to shift internally emotionally clear start to wake up start to see what's actually going on around them it actually starts to shift physical reality so it is absolutely inevitable as I heard again someone say earlier that this reality is going to shift and it's going to play out when it starts to play out visibly which it has already done in turbulent acts of of significant change. Now the question you know, on everybody's you know, minds is how bad will it get? If, go, I, if I could just jump if I could just jump in real quick, this is exactly what the hundredth monkey effect is, and in my opinion, it's already happened. Yeah. Yeah, it it has. It just hasn't played out in physicality yet because the energetic leads are physical as as all you guys know. If it hasn't happened energetically yet, it it can't come into physicality. Because we're creating the physicality one way or another. So, yeah, absolutely. It's behind the scenes. It's actually a done deal. In, in physicality, we're not there yet. In fact, it's, it's become really obvious. If you follow financial stuff very closely, that's the area that's probably going to shift in first and most obviously. And it will have a big impact. Now, will it, now should we use the language of collapse or falling apart? I'd prefer not to use that at all. It may, it will appear to those who aren't yet woken up that everything is collapsing. But if you're awake and have eyes to see, you'll see, as Michelle said earlier about emotional clearing, it's creating space for the new to appear. You know, the gold back currency you referred to earlier, Greg, is an aspect of, of the financial shifting that appears to be imminent. And can you can you actually have both things happening at the same time without some space being cleared? No, no, it's, it, it just doesn't work that way. So there's going to be turbulence. There's going to be rapid shifting. You know, religions religions are going to have very bright lights shone in their darkest places to mm-hmm. to reveal them for the control mechanisms that they are. The financial system is going to start morphing before our very eyes. Someone referred to Karen Hudis earlier. Now Karen Karen okay. is yep. Uh, yep, Karen Hudis is certainly shining some light in, in dark places. But Karen Hudis is still playing on the surface of things. The real uh power playing games are going on much deeper than the area than, than the level that Karen is actually working at. But she I mean she's doing she's playing her role, doing her work, bringing everything to the everything she can to the attention of people. But the real, the real aspects of shift in the financial system are going on 
in and amongst the very, very old families that actually are the custodians of the gold assets which have backed the financial system for thousands of years, one way or another. And they appear to be on the move to work directly with humanity. Now, in the past, they've worked with governments. They've worked with the banking families. They've they worked with pretty much anyone who was around who was, who was actually sort of at the, if you like, the very high levels of the public management of the, of the collective. They seem to be changing their policy, guys. They're going to start working directly with the people, and they're going to do that in 2015. And this is going to cause a massive, massive ripple in the financial system. And the gold-backed currency aspect is actually part of it, as far as I can tell. So anyone who's, who's paying attention to the, the four corners of the alternative media looking at the financial stuff will know the, the sort of thing that I'm talking about. And it'll begin there. And, and whether, it's, whether the things that follow that are you know, revelations about the lack of integrity throughout the system uh, focusing on, say, the religions or focusing on the corporate governments, uh, or focusing on the obvious presence of extraterrestrials, not only you know, out there in the solar system, but down here on the ground. Whether it starts to flow out from there first, it really doesn't matter. Disclosure will follow as soon as the change starts to, to, to come on. And it's, it's, to me, it's actually being driven by the internal shifting, the internal work that's being done by people who are waking up. And everyone that's listening to this is absolutely in that category. Uh, you just, you know, you've, you've obviously agreed to wake up early to facilitate the whole shift, give it that hundredth monkey effect you talk about, Greg. Uh, that's absolutely what's going on here. So as far as 2014 goes, I think it's been, for a lot of people, it's, it's been the internal journey. Uh, many of the people I've contact with have been through their version of what I've been through. Uh, and it's all the same. It's all just the path. Some people get sort of thrown into the deep end, which is somewhat what happened to me. And, and others, it's been a much longer journey. Uh, some are just waking up right now, absolutely right now. That, that every time someone wakes up, it adds momentum to the shift energetically to the new reality and quite literally I mean there's a new reality forming which will overtake the uh, overtake the current reality over a period of years stretching up for us and the uh, pundits are talking about 2017 as being a very pivotal year and I think the changes that will appear this year are, are absolutely going to you know very clearly point to a couple of years down the track when things start to settle and and uh, the people start to really understand actually who they are. Now, as far as 2014 goes, there was a really interesting pattern energetically through the year. The, the first quarter of the year was really clearly, and, and I'm, I'm referring to this when I, I sort of observe the, the blog writers and what they, what they feel, what they talk about, and the channelers. The first quarter of the year were, were very much the energies of transition and what popped out was everyone was talking about the I am presence, the importance of being present in your body and understanding that that, that presence is your evidence of your existence and drawing attention to the fact that your consciousness is there and available to you at all times. Second quarter, we had a whole focus on feminine energies coming in and people were writing about internal masculine and feminine balance. Third quarter, there seemed to be a switch. People were focused on sovereignty. They started to talk about how the I am presence and the balances internally that we're trying to achieve actually play out in your moment-by-moment -moment experience. And in the third quarter, we, uh, my perceptions were that a very hardcore transitional energies, which were basically saying, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? And just pushing us more and more up to this moment, where uh, I think the volume is actually going to get turned up on that and uh, we're going to see some seriously hardcore high vibrational stuff coming through late this quarter, early next quarter. Uh, so I, I think agree, the, I, I agree. Yeah, the energetic push has been intense and it's, it's just going to keep accelerating. And of course, that means the 100th monkey aspect yeah. is going to go through One the roof. One person at a time. 
Yes, one person, one person at a time. At we all have to do our own. Our own. Every people want to know right now what they can do. Go inside, work on yourself, do your own work, and stay balanced in your heart space and grounded. That's what you can do yeah. in 2015 for this planet and for humanity. Chris, we we have to move on, but I, I wanted to say, um, Helene, are you still with us? I sure am. I sure here? am. Helene. And thank you so much yeah, I for calling to thank you. I wanted to Absolutely. thank you, Helene, uh, for, for bringing uh, Chris Hales to the conference, you know, with Greg. And, you know, that's where I met Greg. Um, you know, my life changed dramatically from that point. You know, there was a, that was a very powerful conference you guys had with some very powerful, wonderful people. And uh, I, just wanted, I just want to thank you, Helene, for bringing Chris uh, into our lives. And also we have someone else coming up here in a few moments, Lance White, as well, that you brought oh, into that's our so lives. Exciting. So thank you for that, I Helene. Love him yeah. too. Wonderful. Look, just, could I, I'll just, guys, I'd just like to throw in one go, final go right little ahead. note. I, yep. The 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 point we've arrived at, the point I've arrived at, me personally, mm-hmm. something that's been downloading and and basically swelling through my consciousness for months now, is a, a certain way of, of of explaining and expressing sovereignty to people, and I'm going to be very much focused on putting that out this year. That's true. And the my little channel is One People Oneness Radio, on Blog Talk. So keep an eye out on, on that. There's one show on there at the moment with uh, Amy Brimicum and Tammy Anaharta that I've been doing fairly regularly. And if you've been listening, you'll understand, you'll actually have been tracking the journey that all three of us have been on because we've been on a similar mm-hmm. journey. But my focus this it's coming amazing. year is going to be, yeah, it's been, a, it's been tremendous. And they've been great companions along the way too, as, as has my partner Hannah. In fact, I'm, I'm at her, I'm on the side of a mountain called Ben Cairn Mountain, about an hour mm-hmm. east of Melbourne. It's been absolutely magnificently warm, quiet weather. Um, we're here with some friends about to have dinner. So uh, that's my day-to-day. But for the rest of the year, yeah, very much a focus on putting out ideas around sovereignty because everyone's, everyone's struggling with exactly how we express that and how we achieve it on the ground. And uh, there's a really interesting and very, very powerful connection between that return to balance being in your heart, in self-aware, um, masculine, feminine balance that relate directly to sovereignty because sovereignty is an expression outwardly of those balances. So look for more information about that uh, coming soon. And if I just also may say, g'day to Lance White. And Lance, we need to talk. <laughs> if you're listening, mate. Because <laughs> uh, there's really know he stuff come up. And he's in the queue, so he's listening. Yeah. Thank yeah, you thanks, so Lance. much well, for calling in, Chris. I'll be in touch. You're most Thank welcome, you, and I hope happy everyone... Happy New Year. Ha- yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. And 2015, yeah, so thumbs much, up. Brother. It's going to be bye-bye. All righty. Take care now. You know... Cheers. That is nice. You know, the the main thing I learned... I guess that was nice to that you brought attention to the Return to Atlantis event. That was a life-changing event. And the one thing that Chris said that stuck out, he said, that was almost like the start of the year. That was the beginning, almost practically, of 2014 mm-hmm. for us, and um, that mm-hmm. really just started us off here. And the biggest lesson that I learned with that entire conference and everything that all of us went through is that we we can always, you know, when we talk about declaring our sovereignty, or we feel sort of weak sometimes. We just have to remind ourselves that only those of 100% divine light and love could be in your space and everything else is against (laughs) free will and against universal law. That is the bottom line. And saying that and feeling that with very, very strong belief in its validity makes it so. That's just what I just wanted to say that. We saw that up up front and personal there. You know, you know, it was it was an, it was an amazing event. You know, it was life changing for many people. Um, it really was, it, and and it was a real. It was a lot of work. People people don't realize yeah. how much work and stress goes into something like that. But also, none of us realized how it was going to change our lives. No idea I was going to meet any of you guys there. I just knew I had to be there. 
So it, in look at look at the platform that we've now given you know people to be able to speak, uh, and you know that basically all started in 5D radio started with your co-host Heidi. Cole. Yes, and I yes. see I and, see a very familiar area code right now. Uh, this is my first co-host on In 5D Radio, and we both had the pleasure of interviewing the late Dolores Cannon. Uh, of course, uh, Jim Delacoli, Jordan Maxwell, Santos Bonacci, Els Bastian, and many others from New York City. I'd like to bring in uh, so- singer, songwriter, stunt person, and author of The Subway Diaries, Heidi Cole. Hi, Heidi. Happy New Year's <laughs> Eve, and welcome back. Hi, Greg. Hi, Michelle. Happy New Year's Eve to you guys, too. I'm in a restaurant Hi, right Heidi. now. Hi. <laughs> I've never really? spoken. We haven't had, good to hear your voice. I'm just in a restaurant, so if there's banging, they're rearranging tables for round two, I think. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's madness here. I'm in Times Square, and it's it's absolute insanity already. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah I imagine the energy there is off the, off the boards, though, for tonight. Yeah, this year in particular, it's even crazier than normal in New Year's Eve insanity. So it's been this way actually since uh, Christmas Eve. You can't walk. Um, you can't walk on the sidewalks, or you have to walk in the streets. It's been so packed. So, so did, did uh, you bring? Did you bring your guitar with you? Oh my God, no, no. I, <laughs> I'm. A, I'm. A, yesterday was my homeless light underground day. Today is. Um, uh-huh. I play dress up. <laughs> so, so, so I have no guitar. Today. Yes, right, I'm. I'm cool. My one year. My one day a year. Yes. <laughs> so no guitar. Uh, but yesterday, definitely, I showed a group of people around the. I do these tours underground and the of these subway musicians, and it's just so amazing to see. You know, people have these preconceptions of why people are down there singing and what what they're doing, and and some of my um, musician friends um, just said it so eloquently. You know, they're about the free, the freedom. They were like, we could do Broadway, we could do anything, but there's so much freedom of of existence down here, which is such a has been such a rare commodity um, on the planet <laughs> as of late. Um, and from from what I was listening to, I'm I'm. Betting, banking on 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 your predictions for the future, I sure hope, because it's like a vice otherwise. <laughs> um, let me, but it it was me, awesome. Go ahead. Let me ask you this: no. but, uh, what 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 was your favorite N five D radio show that we did together, and why? <sighs> oh, it's a toss up between Els and Dolores, I think. You know, I think I like Els because um, Els Bastian because, and I'm uh, we just we we talk all the time now. Um, because her story was similar to mine, I could relate to her of having had uh, chronic fatigue and and then coming out the other side of it with these this sort of life changing view of the world. And then her just her story of not fitting into what's expected as quote normal, and then finding this amazing gift from out of that 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 sensation of i it's almost like her body was telling her you're not supposed to follow the the herd and so she sort of collapsed regrouped and i love I, could, I think i love her energy if i could just cut in her here right now real quick um i for those who don't know els baston she's an animal communicator that heidi and i interviewed and uh she'll she'll talk to you uh talk to your animal and find out whatever's wrong with you but Usually, whatever is wrong with the animal is a reflection of something that's going on with you as well. And I thought I thought that was really fascinating. You know, yeah, they seem to run parallel. Her. Same with families, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like the Bruce yeah. Lipton theory of, of 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 epigenetics and environment causing illness and this 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 ease. You know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, versus genetics. So it's um. I just I love her energy. Of course, we all love Dolores, and I loved speaking yeah. with her. But Els was slightly um, it was it was novel and slightly new for me, and 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 I, I I've enjoyed communicating with her since. And so, and I'm I'm actually beginning a, a healing business myself here in New York. So um, she's been instrumental in in helping me with that because I I work with tons of people. I just haven't gone public with it because I'm afraid I'll get like. I don't know, decapitated for doing the illegal Aww. helping helping people without a medical license thing. So, but she's been really supportive and um and and has been a good support. So she's she's a gift. That was my favorite. I think that's that's my first first pick for interviews that I 
Well, I know that we did uh, our, our second interview. You know, coming right out of the box, we did Jordan Maxwell. <laughs> and that was one of the most viewed and listened to shows that we've had on N5D Radio. Yeah, wow. that did get a lot, of, a lot of traffic. Yeah. It is. Heidi, you know, when I, when I first met Greg, I'd never been on the radio before. And he, you know, there was you and then Kendra, and I'm like, how in the heck am I going to fill those shoes? I mean, I was mortified, and I, and I wasn't able to do it. So I just, you know, people are still listening to those shows. I don't know. Oh, no, you you're a natural, the- Michelle. You're yes. just amazing. You're just the whole in 5D wardrobe fits you perfectly. So it's it's a it's a whole it's you. It's totally you. So well, I I, I yeah. have to say you you had the guts to get out there first and I I really appreciate that and um you know in 5D has a YouTube channel with all of uh with all of your uh interviews and also you can find them on n5d.com. Um, Greg, where is that at? The, uh, is there an actual video? Is it, there's a main link at the top of the page. It says N5D Radio? Yeah. 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 So what, else you, what else do you have planned for tonight, Heidi? Oh, goodness. This is so rare for me because I'm usually in the subways in my, you know, my little homeless guitar thing going. But I, I, I'm going to see dinner and then one party and then another party. And I don't know. I'm with my two great friends who took care of me on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So they're my, um, they're my New York holiday family, which I'm so, so grateful for, you know, and, um, one is a, is a, is a, is an amazing, uh, he should be interviewed. He's actually about to be on NPR in the next month or so. And they're doing a documentary. He's a, he works with Alzheimer's patients. He's got this amazing gift. And ironically, it's sort of, you know, you, you all will, Michelle, you'll relate to this because he's been asked over the last uh, couple of weeks by this documentary film company, you know, this crew. So, so what makes, you know, we filmed all these people who work with Alzheimer's patients. What makes you, though, so you're so different. What makes you different? How come you are so successful and so uh, able to do what you do with these patients who are virtually unreachable? And he can't answer because he's, it's a gift, you know. It's just a, and, you know, right. you... Yeah, yeah, it's like it's impossible. It's sort of like asking Van Gogh, "How do you paint?" You know, or, or, or right. uh, uh, you know, I can teach you to paint, but you're not going to be Van Gogh. You're not going to be, you know. Um, so, so um, it's it's so fascinating to sit next to someone who's a who's a who has a gift, and ah, there it's when it's a true gift, the humility absolutely overshadows their gift. I mean, it just covers it blankets that you can't get through it because the humility is just one big safe cloak over it and keeps it what it's supposed to be. It's so fascinating. Um, well, so, Heidi, you know, we have, um, we have Helene is in uh, Hawaii at the moment. I'm in Texas. Um, Greg is in South Florida. You're up in one of the darkest places in the United States as far as energy goes. Besides, oh, I my think God. Maybe Washington, D.C. So, Where I'm from. We have... Uh, <laughs> We have, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have, uh, That's the siren goes off right now. Yeah, right. I know. I'm sorry. Right on, right on cue. That was yeah, right was on cue. Right. That was cool. dark and twisty. Here we are. Yeah, wasn't it? Are we not creating our own reality or yeah. what? Yes. We have uh, yeah. my former co-host Larry Lockin holding energy up in in, in Oregon and Coos Bay. So, you know, hats off to everybody right now. You know, as we connect yeah. on the radio and. I know Larry's in the chat room right now for holding the energy, for bringing in and anchoring that light. You know, it takes people like us to, um, you know, to help uh, be the beacons. And and, uh, so thank you so much for spending time on your New Year's Eve to call in and speak with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Michelle and Greg. And and I and I and I agree. This this is a this is a very dark, very heavy, very 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 dense. Uh, place, um, but uh, I feel it's, it's, a, it's sort of a here more than ever. Does it need uh, extra light, bright beings to do do that kind of work? So I am here until I'm not. So um, it, it's a, it's a lot, for- though. Yeah, that's, yeah, I always very, I said to my friend, I'm not sure I'm going to make it to midnight because 2014 has kicked my butt, but we'll see. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> right, but I really again. I. Thank you. I love ch- touching base with you guys, and and we'll we'll touch base later in the, in 2015. I have a feeling. So um, thank you, Michelle, for doing such an amazing job, and you, Greg, as well. 
Thank you. And before we let you go, can you tell our listeners how to get a hold of you? Oh, sure. Um, my uh, my website is uh, the Subway Diaries dot com uh, subway diaries plural dot com and I'll soon I also have a new website up imaginal me um, and it's uh it's uh it's another book I'm writing a healing method that you could probably visit in a couple months it's up but it'll be I'll start to spread it around it's it's a, a healing uh, method that I've developed and um and I and my coaching which I do a lot of is just a so it's embryonic, and, and then my voiceover and everything is listed on the Subway Diaries site. I can always be reached on Facebook and Twitter, forward slash Heidi Cole on both, and email Heidi Cole at Gmail. But um, and I hope to talk to you guys again in 2015. It would be awesome. Yeah, it would. And good luck on your new venture. And yeah. I know it's going to kick ass. Everything you touch turns to gold, so I know it's going to be perfect. Oh, I love doing it. I just have to figure out the money thing always creeps me out. So that's I need someone to <laughs> – that's the part yeah. that's hard for me. <laughs> so, all right. all right, you guys. Have a great one and happy new year. Bye, Heidi. Happy new year Bye. to you, too. Good night, Heidi. Bye. Good night, guys. You know, Bye. I, I used to live in upstate New York, and I really don't care for the energy of large cities, but it's really important to have people anchoring the light in these areas of the world. And we're really grateful that Heidi is anchoring the light in New York City. Now, Michelle, I, I see that there's another guest uh, right there in, in, in the queue. Would you like to bring our next guest in? I would. Um, you know, this, this person that's about to come on, you know, really made an impact on me. Um, this is Lance White, and Lance is a, also a radio show host. He has a fireside chat. And thanks, um, you know, as I mentioned before, to Helene for um, bringing us to California to the conference that we had in uh, January of 2014 um, that you and uh, that you and, and Helene held, Greg. And um, Lance, when I met him in person, his vibration was so high um, that I just, res- you know, you just resonate with somebody. It's almost like you're just pinging energy back and forth to your to your heart space. He's an amazing guy. He um, he just gets it, and he uh, is able to connect with his uh, guests and ask them exactly what we would like to to know uh, as listeners. And he's a seasoned radio show host, and I've studied his style a lot. And um, Lance is just being himself, and that is what I love about him. And with that being said, that is my New Year's Eve introduction to Mr. Lance White. Welcome to N5D Radio. Well, hello, and uh, I'm glad to be here, and thank you for that wonderful, glowing uh, that was uh, great. Prelude, prelude. I felt the same way about you, Michelle. you got to live up to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's now great. you got to gotta live up to it, Lance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> he, he really oh, does. Oh, my goodness. I spent, gosh, back in 2013, I spent a week with this guy. He's so, he's just a pleasure to be around. Hi, Lance. It's me, Helene. Hi, Helene. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. It's so good that you could be on the show. And uh, Michelle didn't exaggerate when she did your opening um, the uh, introduction. You really are. You really, um, you know, you, you're you like a pioneer in this radio hosting. Uh, you've been doing this since, what, 2007, 2008? Yeah, yeah pretty amazing you kind of uh you laid the groundwork and uh inspired all of us so happy new year i gotta gotta say lance i've been listening to your fireside chat shows for years and i've enjoyed every one that i've listened to uh and 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 like helene was just saying you know he he is the 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 pioneer basically of 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 putting together these amazing uh shows online and uh we are so grateful for you know all the work that you've done and I, I, I can't I can't say enough good words that Michelle hasn't already said <laughs> you know <laughs> to, to to add to it. I mean you're you're an amazing man and it's been my pleasure knowing you. Oh well thank you so much and, and the pleasure is also mine and uh I have to say that it's uh it's not me doing anything. I'm just a tool. So mm-hmm. I just kind of uh like the fool in the tarot deck I put my foot forward, and usually I land on my face, 
but uh, sometimes I get on a lily pad. So um, that's kind of how it continues to evolve. I well, totally Lance, agree. Yeah. I was wondering if you could um, partake with some of that wisdom of yours and tell our listeners a little bit about what you see um, that we have accomplished in 2014. I know that you're on Facebook a lot. I know that you've seen a lot of uh, energies going through the groups. And um, tell us what 2015 looks like to you. Well, it seems to me that uh, 2014 was kind of a clearing, and I liked what Chris had to say about it. And um, that 2015 and 2016 are going to be uh, progressively more intense because the groundwork has been laid, and the information is all out there about what's who's doing what to whom, uh, at least at the levels that the public can grasp fairly quickly because it's information that uh, many of your guests, you mentioned Jordan Maxwell for one, have been talking about for decades. So uh, they get into the ET influence and the, you know, the controllers and this and that and the other thing, the breakaway civilization. And these are things that people, uh, you know, if you say anything about uh, the breakaway civilization, they just look at you like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And uh, so these are things that are going to have to come out. And they kind of, it was like the ground was laid in 2014. And also for our own personal clearings, we're still working on, as much as I hate to say it, we are still clearing our the spirals of our own um, recurring situations so that they can be healed and released. And so that's going to continue on into 2015. But I think that there are going to be much more intense revelations. Uh, probably more shocking events will occur on the global stage. Uh, and I don't think that things will work out like the uh, New World Order crowd has uh, designed for us. Uh, those factions and uh, groups are infighting as well. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that we won't understand right away because it, it's uh, been going on behind the curtain for so long, we just don't know how to put it together. But there, were, there are people stepping up uh, to the plate and, and explaining what's going on. Um, I have to say that Gordon Duff from Veterans Today is one of the major uh, um, p- players that is attempting to get information out to the public. And uh, all of the people who you guys interview, I interview, I mean, it's all interrelated. And uh, you can't separate anything out uh, because it, it's all entangled. <laughs> so, you know, what you do to one person, you're doing to yourself and everyone else. So that's why I think that the uh, the dark uh, cabal side or the uh, groups that are that have harm to intended for the planet and for the humans are going to uh fail miserably. So that's it's funny one that you it's funny that you brought up uh you know the, just briefly mentioned the new world order. I earlier today I was taking my German shepherd for a walk and uh I, I walked walked by this one building it's called the One World Center and <laughs> Right on the doorway where it says One World Center, there's also a bunch of lawyers that work in that building, and I'm thinking, how appropriate, <laughs> right? Hidden, hidden in plain sight, right there. You know, oh, yeah. and if that wasn't, if that wasn't enough, and, and this is how, you know, for everyone listening, how you can really look at life in a in a very different way. Um, you know, I just had to laugh how it was hidden in in uh, plain sight, but as we were walking home, for some reason, I was just drawn to look at this one house. And the address was 2461. And the first thing I saw really was the 461, which equal 11, and the 2, which means two 11s, which breaks down to 1111. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, your life is really a, a perspective of, you know, how you view things. And everyone has a different perspective. But I think once you awaken, you, you really do see life in a completely different way, than, more, more differently than how other people would perceive it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, the funny thing is uh, we were not ever really designed to struggle and uh, fight for life. 
this was not meant to be a place where we had to uh, work and toil and the rest of it. That is all manufactured. And so uh, the false matrix that uh, runs things, that that exists around everything, has us pretty much well convinced that, uh, you know, you have to do this and you have to do that. But once the belief systems fall and crumble, uh, then uh, you, we're going to find out that we have a lot more freedom and that it was we actually are completely free. And the corporations are going to, uh, as much as they have done to create a kind of figure eight uh, design all over the globe, and uh, an interlocking infinity sign uh, because they believe that they are creating our future, uh, they are not going to be able to survive because uh, one factor is that those at the top are milking everything out. So there's no money there. And so that's kind of a problem. And uh, I think that uh, 2015 is going to be a year when the uh, the, fi- the true finances of the world will start to become known by more people, and it will reach a, a point where there will be a tipping point. Uh, I think Chris said the hundredth monkey effect. There may be many hundredth monkey effects. Mm-hmm. You know, there may be a financial hundredth monkey. There may be a, a, a extraterrestrial hundredth monkey. There may be. A, you know, underground bases. I mean, there could be thousands of them that just go wham. You know, like um, in the movie V for Vendetta, where uh, V at the end has all the dominoes lined up, and he just pushes the first domino, and they all fall down. And I, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I see it happening. And that will continue till 2017, which will be a pivotal year. And then after that, I'm not sure. I, I can't mm. see anything past 2017, but I'm sus- I suspect that that will be kind of like a time when, okay, uh, everybody will have done what they have done, and that it's kind of an assessment and a moving on of some sort, and then I think that there will be some miraculous kinds of events that will occur on after 2017 but we're in the we really have run the ringer this is a this has become a wretched hellhole uh by design and Mm -hmm. life should not be this way and i Mm -hmm. know that uh, all of you listening are are loving caring beautiful people with uh creativity and and beautiful souls and uh and that's why you're here to offset (laughs) the dark souls that don't have all that beauty and creativity and are channeling all that dark energy into uh, destruction and, and evil uh, and evil. So um, I say, keep on. uh, And I think 2015 for us, those of us who are centered in the heart and uh, you know, who are not uh, service to self, but service to all will thrive in 2015 and 2016 including yourself, service to yourself as well as others, definitely. Yeah, there's a, there's a cool balance there. Mm-hmm. Now, it's funny, too. You know, um, I, I've been talking to people about the pyramid, and we've all seen that, you know, the pyramid with the eye at the top. And, uh, you know, to me, the pyramid, you know, the eye at the top is probably archons. To me, this is the pyramidal structure. Art, you have archons mm-hmm. and then... The Anunnaki and then lower level ETs like you know Greys and Alpha Draconians and so on. And then you have your secret societies. Then you have religion, which people think is at the top of the pyramid. Then you have world leaders and so on and so forth. And of course we're at the bottom. But I've always said that once the bottom of the pyramid unites, the rest will collapse. So it's all about us coming together. And like our first guest on the show, Jim Del Coley, was saying, there's, this is a, this upcoming year is a year of new beginnings, and let's do it. Let's start it right mm-hmm. now. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's an opportunity to really uh, press ourselves to move more deeply into unity consciousness, which means there nobody's wrong and everybody's right. So if you eliminate the need to argue, which comes from the ego, 
then you can find solutions to problems because you're working together on the same things. And we, we can all see what the problems are, so don't bicker about things that don't matter. They're inconsequential. Those are things that the ego likes to uh, be right about, and it's like a turtle that uh, gets turned upside down. It can't right itself, and the ego will do anything to get back on its feet, and so it does so by making the other person wrong. So those games are over, in a, in essence, and the, and the people that play them will be obvious. I mean, they already are obvious, so yes. uh, they will become even more obvious to to the awakened uh, people and children, especially the children. They can see right through everything, you know, mm-hmm. and so... Uh, yeah, this is a great time to really work together on anything. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's something that you feel from the heart and excites you and that it keeps you going and gives you a thrill to get up in the morning. From the heart, definitely. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you you read my mind, Greg. <laughs> I think you have a question. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. Lance, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to talk about this subject, but I know that you can handle this beautifully. Um, you know, some of us, um, <laughs> that's a great way to intro it, right? Yeah. Some of us um, are concerned, you know, perhaps we may uh, have to drop our, our physical bodies. You know, mm. we came here to do a certain job, and, um, you know, we're being attacked in all different directions. And we've done a lot of articles on N5D, and you and I have talked about this on uh, the show that I had uh, uh, with you as my guest. Mm-hmm. I was wondering, um, you know, we have this false uh, false light matrix um, uh, where it's a reincarnation trap system, and it's all uh, part of this setup to, mm-hmm. you know, bring us back into this hell hole so that um, we can have our energies siphoned off. But, you know, as we become aware and awake and uh, regain our sovereignty and our power, you know, we know and we've read now, you know, our our listeners and our readers are now aware of this. Um, Tell us, you know, in your opinion, um, what would you do if you were to drop your body? Where, Where would you go? I mean, I know that the bright light um, the bright white light, from what I understand, is not the direction that you want to go. Great where would question. you Where would you go? Right, right. Yes, absolutely. It's so funny because um, in that movie, what was it about the uh, little girl in the television set? They, they could uh, go towards the light, Marianne. Go towards the light, and uh-huh. then they realize, no, oh, don't go towards the light. <laughs> don't right. go towards no, the light. That, it's a trick. Yes, guys. <laughs> and that was really guys. good. It's, that's a very powerful uh, visual for uh, what's happening because uh, people have their near-death experience. They go to the light, and, of course, they're told, well, you could you know, accomplish so much more if you went back. And look, and here they show you in, the, you know, in multiple television screens that you're floating in the air, and you know, we've heard all these different accounts. And people come back, and they have heightened sensibilities and stuff. Um, but I think that's a, an extraterrestrial program that's running, and probably a gray program. But anyway, or Syrian, yeah. So um, where would I go? Okay. Well, um, you first of all, you don't want to panic because if you are floating in without uh, coordinates, you don't want to uh, lower yourself into a frequency by uh, engaging in fear or um, some kind of frighten, frightening, uh, any kind of emotion that will drop you down uh, into a reality that you're comfortable with. So it's really important to if you if I found myself floating, okay, okay, I'm I'm out of body. Okay, let's look around and see what's here, and just well, keep look, calm look, and look, and don't look for um, the guy that's laughing. Look for the guy that's laughing, because if I'm out of my body when you're out of your body, I'm going to be celebrating. And <laughs> Oh, yeah, me, well, so. uh, let's hope so. Let's yeah, hope it's like that. Static. Yeah. I mean, yes, absolutely. I mean, I've been wanting to drop my body for <laughs> 64 years, and I haven't been able to get rid of it yet. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, folks, but um, but um, um, uh, yeah. 
there's talk of a you know a massive graduation once the uh, architecture of the archontic uh, grid that uh, skews incarnations and keeps us coming back. Even Gurdjieff talked about it in his Fourth Way um, work that uh, your soul goes to the moon, and there uh, indeed there is some kind of uh, device on the far side of the moon that's dark. And the moon is an artificial base, as far as I'm concerned. And it collects soul energy, and that's where the souls are recycled and put back to the benefit of those who are running the matrix and the control and domination system. And we're nothing more. I mean, really, the Matrix uh, a trilogy is, a, is like a documentary because we're milked at every level from birth to death and then we're uh, the e- souls are even generic. I mean, they can pool souls, so you have no sense of identity, and they can just siphon off a little and make it a psychopath that goes to, into Wall Street and ends up running uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, or yeah, mm-hmm. you know, may may it turns a president and things like that. And so these are not big things to, for for those entities because they're working outside of time and outside of our dimension. So they have a little bit of an advantage in that sense, and um, but they won't for long because I think we're the learning architect- so much more about them too. You know, and yeah. the best way the best way to to live your life is number one, eliminate the fear, and that basically starves the archons. You know, yes. <laughs> the, yes. you can starve these bastards. Uh, whatever you want to call them, and uh, you know, and live your life. You can make the proverbial, uh, you know, heaven on earth. I hate using that word, but you know, it is what it is. You know, you can, we can make that here until that time comes where it is, you know, the transitioning or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I, I so agree with that. Mm-hmm. And um, the other thing is to be <clears throat> to work on being completely authentic. Uh, the archons exist uh, b- through imitation. They cannot create like we do. So uh, one way that I look at it at times is that we are actually the creator gods who came down through the various universes and ended up, uh, you know, in a in a body with this vast beingness compressed into our body. Call it what you will, a spirit, soul, or whatever. I don't care. And we are the creator gods. So the archons, even though they are more powerful in the sense that they are uh, unseen to us and they work at the unconscious level <clears throat> and have uh, an ability to do things that manipulate and control, they cannot create. So what they do is they uh, create situations where we are led to create what they want, like wars uh would be an example, pedophilia, anything that's horrible and despicable, uh, that is what is one form of energy that they feed off of. And then another form of energy is worship. So the religions of the world are designed to uh, produce beings who emit a higher frequency that is consumed by the entities that are... Um, just lay it kicking back and soaking up all that worship. And the more worship mm-hmm. they can get, the better. And they feed off of that. So every time we worship uh, anything, whether it's a, a phony god or whether it's an E.T., you know, a craft comes down and it's an E.T. and we drop to our knees because we're just so in awe of these advanced beings. We have to stop doing that shit. And I mm-hmm. mean it. We have to start remembering we I am the creator God. That E. T. Yes. is scared of me. And I better find <laughs> out what their intentions are and what they want before I go onto the ship and say, Oh, take me for a ride. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, one thing I was thinking too is while you were talking about this, they say that we only have twenty of our sixty some odd codons turned on in our mm. DNA. Imagine how powerful we'll be as these codons are they're like light switches. Imagine all those light switches being turned on. Uh, we mm-hmm. have more power. We we are like the genetic royalty of the universe because we're basically yes. a mel- the, not just a melting pot of ethnicities, but we're also the melting pot of the galaxy and universe. Absolutely. Beautifully said, Greg. 
Beautifully Thank said. Thank you. And, you know, everything, that's why everything is designed here to make us feel insecure and uh, foolish. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the whole Hollywood system is a is oh. a setup for us to feel insecure so we can worship the gods that are walking on the red carpet. I mean, it's all become so obvious after a while. You know, and Lance, you realize, I think of it, I'm sorry. Eh? Go ahead. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think of it as worshiping as being one of these things, but it was anything to create a dependency. Yes. Where we would look outside of ourselves, yes. not look within at our Absolutely. own power as the powerful being we are. And that's the way that every single institution around us is created. Yes. The education system is not to yep. really teach you, but to convince you you don't know much. Yep. And the legal system is to look outside for justice. And every system, the medical system is, and health care system is to, uh, you know, turn our eyes away from the fact that we could heal our own selves. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the power is, is within us. Everything was to create a dependency. And that was the fiber of what was created here. I didn't, I didn't make the connection of worship, though. When you get down on your knees and actually worship something, you're actually giving away every drop of your personal power. That's yes. the ultimate. You know, and, and it's, 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 it's all hidden in plain sight, too. You know, in, in Genesis 126, it says, let us make man in our own image. Well, you know, mm-hmm. people have to ask themselves, who is us and our? And, and in the Bible, it would be the Elohim. And, uh, you know, you get, you got to think, okay, who are the Elohim and what is their agenda? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And who are and you giving so, your energy away to? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anything that where we're projecting outside of ourselves uh, is, as, as uh, Helene said, that is a form of energy vampirism. And it extends to politics. I mean, imagine meeting the president. Well, he's just a guy, for crying out loud. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, all of these things are arranged outside of time. Uh, as part of the matrix setup. So, you know, if somebody rises to the top and they're really wealthy, I mean super wealthy, you can know without a doubt that that is something that was set up in another dimension outside of time as part of the control system. And it looks like it just happened, you know, like Madonna. Oh, here now she's a huge star. Uh, This one, that one. And all of that, everything that is at the top that is vastly wealthy and running the world is something that has been put there and is there for our control and domination. And it's pretty clear that that's what they're doing. And they don't yes, tell that us. brings a whole new meaning to the, you know, to um, going within. I mean, going. What does you know? People want to know what does going within mean? Well, it's everything that's that's not without. It's everything else except external it's it's not putting it's not giving away any of your energy um and people don't realize even you know how they're giving away their energy but if you go within you're basically um acknowledging you know sometimes we have to we have to have a banking uh card we have to have mm-hmm. you know a loan for a car to be able to get to work sometimes we have to work but it's it's uh realizing what's happening and using your intention and your imagination to make the best of the situation as you can and connecting with your higher self and bringing in the energies and grounding them into the planet to help. That's what's going to change the system, not fighting the system, because the system's not going to mm-hmm. change. We exactly. have to bring our consciousness yes. out of the system. <clears throat> exactly. Well, you know, they don't call it the earthly maze for nothing because everything is set up as a maze. So uh, it's all a trap, basically. You know, uh, mm-hmm. the simplest way to <clears throat> to see this in the, in an obvious way is a relationship. Look at how many millions mm-hmm. of people are searching just nonstop for their their mate or their soulmate or their uh, twin flame or or just a lover. You know, mm-hmm. and that was set up by the the design of the human being. Uh, when we were, when our brains were divided into two, and the big joke was, well, they'll be looking for their other half for eternity, and they won't even know about us. So uh, that was a, 
a design flaw that was put into us so that we wouldn't look within. We would be constantly trying to fill the hole that we have within ourselves from a lack of self-love and looking for that other person that we, we can give our love to, only we don't have any to give because we don't love ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that's the sad truth. I think we've just truth. covered everything. <laughs> we've covered yeah, everything right. in a nutshell. It, it really is. I mean, really, it starts with loving yourself. Absolutely. If, if you, that's, that is the number one uh, job on this planet, is to love yourself uh, first and give yourself love. And uh, here's an example. How many people have dogs and cats or birds or whatever, and they absolutely adore their animals and take good care of them, but they don't treat themselves well, and they treat themselves like, well, I'm just a, I'm a nothing, you know, I'm a nobody, and blah, blah, blah. And there are all these uh, belief systems that are holding us in place. If you can give yourself half of the love that you give to your pet, and just, just half of it, and still give your pet, you know, as much love as you want, but hold on to half of that for yourself. So every time you're petting your dog or your cat or whatever, you are also doing an affirmation mentally, uh, and it doesn't even have to be a verbal. You can just know that you are, at the same time, loving yourself. Just say, every time I give my dog love, I'm giving myself love too. That's great. I've got my German Shepherd at my feet, so every time I pet him and say, and say I love you, I can say, I love you, and I love me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's in the so end, there is no, so there is no one. There's just one, uh-huh. one, per, one being. So, you know, uh, it's, really, it's really kind of an odd paradox. that we, Everything is paradoxical. And if you can remember that, too, <clears throat> that uh, we can, uh, the mind uh, is the slowest, uh, the, the, the intellectual center is the slowest part of the brain. And it cannot comprehend things that are beyond its ability. And that includes most metaphysics and, and most things that are invisible. So most, almost everything is a paradox. So if you can remember that, it helps in resolving questions that uh, the mind wants to, to uh, dawdle with. And it will take us on a ride uh, that never ends. You get on the, you get on at the, you know, you pay, you pay your ticket and you get on, and only you don't get off because your mind is running the whole show. So we have to get mm-hmm. out of our minds too, and um, and listen to our intuition, tune into it, our emotions. What are my emotions saying? What does my intuition feel? It it's usually the first reaction. A wordless reaction that that you have in your gut uh, or your solar plexus, uh, because it's trying to inform you with light, and so uh, you know when we don't listen to that, we're we're uh, not using our psychic muscles, and you can develop that intuition by uh, following it. And if if you have a thought in your head, gee, I, I don't think I should turn right today. I don't know why, but I'm not going to. And, of course, you think, oh, that's ridiculous. And so then you turn right, and then you end up running over a, a squirrel or something. So you, when you, once you validate that life works that way, that your intuition is right, then the next time it says don't do something, you just don't do it. You may not find out what you missed, but maybe it would be better that you didn't find out. Mm-hmm. Well, Thank you so much for that wonderful summary in just such a short time. I believe that you've got it down, Lance. <laughs> I think you know what you're talking about. Listen, um, you know, um, when you did the Galactic Historian uh, recordings with Andrew Barsis, um, mm-hmm. I was there in Mount Shasta for some of those, and uh, I met uh, your good friend, Kelly Fluke, and so I'd like to say hi to Kelly tonight. Oh, and yeah. Here in person. Yeah, be sure and let her know that that we're thinking of her. And um, we have, uh, coming up next, we have uh, Missy Hill. So if you want to hang around uh, to listen to Missy, that would be great. We're going to take, um, we're going to answer a few calls, a few questions out of our chat room as well. But uh, I just want to thank you so much for, for joining us. And can you tell our listeners how they can find you on a fireside chat? 
Oh, sure, at www.afiresidechat.com. <laughs> and, That's uh, easy enough. Yeah, and then um, on uh, I have the Galactic History site, uh, if people are interested in that. And I have a group on Facebook called, uh, I think it's called the Galactic History uh, Study Group or something. And I'm on Facebook, so uh, under Lance White, so you can find me there. And um, and that's about it. I, I don't have a lot of you know bells and whistles and things to do and buy, so uh, it's pretty simple. Just uh, drop me a note and say hello. And I just want to thank you guys for for being in my life because you are all so special, and uh, you know it, it, it's just all inspiring to to hear you and be with you and uh, even if it's periodically uh, you guys are just doing an incredible uh incredible job on the planet so i just want to thank you for that and wish everybody a, a wonderful new year and it will be a good year this year will be a wonderful year for us indeed yeah, really. thank you so much lance uh it's been all a right. pleasure having you on and great hearing you again yeah, thank you, thank Lance. You. All right. Thanks, Lance. Have a good evening. Happy New you Year, too. brother. Good night. All right. Good night. Take care now. Now, Greg, um, later on in, 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 the, in the show, we're going to open up the um, open up the calls. So, if you'd like to call in and speak with um, Greg or Helene or myself, the phone number to call is area code six four six seven one six. 8890, and you just press 1 to enter the queue. And right now we have Missy on hold, but we're going to get to Missy in just a moment. Just hang in there, Missy Missy Hill. Um, she was uh, on the Cosmic Awakening show with me. And it's interesting, Helene, because um, when I invited Missy and Lance and Chris, you know, I never really thought about the fact that they were actually at um, it's including Missy, was, was at the Return to Atlantis conference. Um, when I was yeah. putting my guests together, I never, it just came to me. I didn't really plan that. And I was, as I was waiting, listening to Lance talk, I was thinking, oh my goodness, now Missy and Chris, and, you know, this is all like from that energy. So that's amazing. Um, and so I was going to ask you, Helene, um, if you if you have time to hang in there with us for a little bit longer, or um, do you have something that you need to do this evening? Um, I'm going to okay be there? here. I'm just going to be uh, uh, kind of hanging in in the background. I'm I'm loving this show. Okay. Oh my goodness, we've okay. had amazing guests, and you're right. So many of these folks were at Return to Atlantis. Lance was at um, L.A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the L.A. conference. So. Now, we, we have a question from Danny Morgan in the chat room that I was hoping that you could help with, Helene, um, and it's regarding what I believe is probably ascension symptoms, although, you know, we're not doctors and we do not prescribe anything or, you know, we can possibly, unless we use our psychic intuition, be able to tell. But his question is, my heart feels like, um, is, is it normal for my heart to actually to hurt? Um I'm getting worried, like I may need to go to a doctor. And I asked him, well, what kind of hurt do you have there? And he says that it feels like um, squeezing and poking. Um, so it's not like sharp pains and everything. And, you know, kind of the first thing that came to mind is, you know, if, if our heart chakra is closed down um, or, if, you know, if we've had any kind of pain with relationships, because we've all been set up for this, for this uh, this heartbreak over and over again. But if your heart chakra is actually closed, Helene, um, would that kind of feel like um, squeezing and poking in your heart center? I don't know. I don't want to answer one way or the next without completely knowing. I know mm-hmm. that um, I know that sometimes part of ascension symptoms, I almost, it, it could almost feel like you're breaking out into a sweat. It could feel like your heart is racing. Um, that's just, that's just, uh, that thing out of your chest. Palpitation. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a palpitation yes. feeling. But I don't know, um, and and I think any symptom, you know, it's an amazing thing. What about that, um, Greg had posted that, that um, in 5D article 
on all of the physical ailments you can have and how they're very much connected to our own thoughts Mm -hmm. and uh, our dominant ways of thinking. And I wonder, um, I don't know the answer for that, but that's a, that's a really intense question. What do you, what do you think in in relation to Greg's article? I have that article up here right now. And, uh, this, this is an article that, that's on InsideTheUnknown.com, uh, and you can do a search for it, but it's called uh, Spiritual Health, What Your Body is Trying to Tell You. And um, let me scroll down to the part where it talks about the heart. Here it is. Okay, the heart and arteries. It says, staying in the flow. We live our lives by commitment to the people, places, and things we love or believe in. Anytime this flow of life, which we have committed to, becomes untenable, for us, and we must allow change in things we do not do not want to see change. We may experience a sympathetic response from the heart and its arteries, leading to irregular heartbeat, abnormal, ab- abnormalities of blood flow, and upheavals such as a heart attack. The holistic recommendation is for a thorough reevaluation of your commitments in life, from career to family, relationships to recreation. Seeking areas of commitment that are no longer supportable as a happy flow in your life. And that goes on to say updating one's commitments may reduce the stress to these vital life-sustaining tissues. So um, there's something going on with commitment. That's, that's basically what this is saying. And uh, I honestly can't answer it. I think it was it was a Danny that asked, mm-hmm. asked that question. Mm-hmm. Danny, I think Danny. you have an idea. There's something going on with commitment right now, and uh, that's up for you to uh, figure out at this point. Yes, and I agree, and I thank you for pulling that up, um, you know, to read. And uh, you can find that on N5D.com, that particular article. It really comes in handy for these ascension symptoms. Now, Helene, uh, your show is usually on uh, N5D radio on Wednesday nights. Um, It's called Embracing What is Real. Um, yeah. Do you have a cos- Cosmic Current as well? Is that another name we of one of, of your show? We do Cosmic Current too when me and C.J. Miller team up together. But me and C.J. Okay. will team up again um, on her station, on her show on um, January 10th and do a show together Tuesday night. And then I'm going to start again on the 21st of January and I'm going to have um, Matt Sajati as a guest, and he was this amazing healer that came to Hawaii and kind of well-known. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but um, he had a few near-death experiences. Yeah, he had a few near-death experiences, and he does um, hands-on healings, and uh, it was very interesting. You know, he would just touch somebody. I found myself like he touched my shoulder when he was doing a healing. I, like, crumpled up, like, into a ball. He also was able to look at my body and say which um, which uh, of my systems and what was going on with my physical health, or what was uh, what needed to be healed or what needed to be worked on, just by looking at the outside of me. And uh, he, I don't know, he did some hands-on healings that were incredibly, incredibly powerful. He was here um, in November. So I'm excited because he's going to be a guest in January. And um, and so, you know, Michelle, you were right, though. I am starting to fizzle out. So I mm-hmm. may have to say goodbye and wish everybody a very, very, very happy New Year. And thank you all for having me on the show to host. Well, I and love I, you had, all. I had that feeling. I had that feeling, you know, we're all connected and uh, I just want to congratulate you on a wonderful show you had with Matt Kahn. It was one of the highest rated uh, shows of the year. And um, I, I do promise that when we get some time, we are going to load that up to the N5D YouTube page, but currently you can still find it on, on Blog Talk Radio. We love you so much, Helene. I know that you um, you, that you have to go this evening. And we look forward to talking to uh, CJ, who has the CJ Miller Show on Tuesday nights, where you can find her and uh, Franco De Nicola a lot of times as well. And thank you for, so thank you for being um, part of N5D Radio and part of our family. Yeah, and before oh, you go, Helene, you I, 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 I just got to say, you know, and for those who, 
aren't aware, Helene and I kicked off the new year um, this year with the Inside the Cosmic Awakening Conference in Los Angeles, and that was an amazing event. We actually met through Facebook a few years ago through a common work history of being therapists in the mental health field, and we both have uh, metaphysical interests. Now, she, she's been my co-host for two conferences, and she's been an Inside D radio host for several years, and I have the greatest love and admiration for all you've done for us and humanity. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. I just love you both so much, <laughs> and I hope this year we is love going to be an too. amazing one for all of us. And, and thank you again for including me on this show. I had a really good time. What a nice, what nice guest. What an excellent high vibrational time this has been. <laughs> so thank you guys. Okay. Happy New Year. You thank you. Okay, Rest happy up. New Year. Happy New Year. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Okay. So moving on, Michelle. Yes. And so Missy has been very patient with us uh-huh. in, in the queue. And Missy was Missy Hill was um, a guest that I had on uh, the Cosmic Awakening show. And we did talk about a lot of these things that we've brought up tonight. She's very in tune with everything that's happening. And uh, we we had a, a lot in common. And so I just wanted to um, bring in the New Year's Eve tonight with Missy Hill to be able to um, join us uh, on this uh, New Year's Eve. And if I could get Missy here Having a Missy, are you with us? Oh, I'm here. Hi, hey. Missy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Greg and Michelle. I get to be with both of you tonight. That's Ooh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's not too long ago that we had you on the on N Five D Radio, and we went over a lot of uh, great things about. Uh, you know, moving these energies through and just wondering what you're doing uh, tonight on this uh, fabulous end of finally 2014. Well, today was basically a year, uh, I mean, a, a year, yeah, it felt like a year today of a lot of clutter <laughs> clearing, just uh, cleaning out my space, making new uh physical cleansing of the body. It's almost like an upgrade with uh, new products that have come my way and removing some, you know, more stuff. Just another upgrade and just a very interesting time of, uh, I would say, hibernation for the past couple weeks, you know, because like Greg said, we had Saturnalia and uh, I just wanted to be in hibernation here and not partake of those energies. So I would just go in and out when I had to because there's a lot of chaos. So the way, and, you know, people are talking a lot about world peace. You know, I uh, was invited to go to a gathering tonight, which circumstances had me not go. And I'm actually very glad to be here on the airwaves with you all not have gone to this gathering, but they were going to do a world uh peace meditation tonight and I was thinking it really begins with inner peace when we have the inner peace within then and everyone has inner peace and doesn't have turmoil then we will have the world peace but it's not this false peace of uh, projection from outside say some other force because we know that could be a false peace just like the false white light I agree, and you have to be really careful when you join these uh, group meditations. You know, uh, jo- everyone needs to join together. I do agree with that, but it's a matter of where your energies are being directed by whoever's leading the meditation. You know, if you're gathering together and you're going to join your, put your energy into the planet, into healing the planet, or to healing humanity, I could, I, I'm, I'm all for that. And, you know, there's power in numbers when it comes to that because, w- you know, we don't have any idea just how powerful we are as one, but you put two, three, four hundred of us together and, you know, we could change the world. And, you know, if we all stopped voting, you know, if we all stopped paying taxes, if we all stopped, you know, agreeing to the system that we're under, you know, it would change in an instant. But we we don't want to give our power away to those who want you to, um, you know, let's join with Archangel Michael and let's, um, you know, let's give our healing energy just to this one person on the planet, you know, because maybe a guru or somebody because 
they could be actually um, being siphoned. That energy could be siphoned um, rather than it needing to go into the planet um, for the purposes of transmuting and raising the vibration. That's what we're here to do right now. So I agree with you, Missy. Thank you for that. And um, so I was wondering, you know, we've been talking about um, the Turn to Atlantis conference and how, um, you know, we talked with Chris Hales earlier tonight, and I know that you got to meet Chris, and you do actually some interviews yourself. And um, I was just wondering, you know, how did your life change after that conference? Did in, did you notice anything, you know, some kind of huge shift? It, it's been a constant shift, and I can't even uh... – you know, some of it I feel like I can't even remember because I've changed so many times. I just know right now it's a lot about the physical upgrade of the body, and I do want to tell this story and then maybe backtrack a little bit. We had a visitor in our yard today. Uh, this morning we were hearing a rooster crowing. He was all over the yard. He was in the front yard. He was in the backyard. He basically spent the whole day here. So I was thinking, on the last day of 2014, this guy has a message. Well, it turns out that in the year 2017, in the Chinese New Year of February, the rooster is going to be the totem. So I thought that's interesting because I've been seeing that 2017 is important, too, for taking some kind of measurement. You know, that if it, 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 2012 was like a seed time, and now we're going into 2014, you know, 2014 has ended, and we're going into 2015. So that's really like, you know, because it's the end of 2012, that's two years, if I'm counting correctly. It's almost like dolphins. Don't dolphins, when they have a, uh, when they're pregnant, I think it's like two years, and then they deliver. And the 15, a lot of people have been saying that the 15 that we're coming into is all about the energetic of the Father, which is, say, divine thought. And the the Father energy corresponds to this, uh, let's say, this fuchsia type of color. Now, if we look at our root chakra, this root chakra has been red. However, these chakras, they're not not getting rid of the chakras, but it's becoming this fine-tuned column of crystalline energy. And what's happening is these colors are changing, and this red is becoming more pink. And it's almost like this the ultraviolet light spectrum and the infrared spectrum is changing as our body is changing. And there's something that came in through some of the research I've been uh, doing, you know, this thing about Ophicus, which is the 13th sign and how this energy from the galactic center is hitting the sun and then from the sun we're be, uh, being bombarded with, you know, these um, the particles you know, from these coronal mass injections that are hitting the Earth core, and it's re-encrypting the body of Earth and also our body at a particle level, which would be at the plasma level. Did you happen to see that um, footage? I know you commented on it, uh, Michelle, that there was some, like, uh, lightning coming off the sun, and quite Mm -hmm. a few people posted this. Now, some people said it was fake, and... Other people, you know, were commenting on it. But I was thinking I had my own experience that day, so I'm not going to say anything about the footage, whether it's real or not real. I mean, I choose to believe it's real only because of what I was experiencing of this re-encryption of this hydroplasmic light within our body, which is the particles, as we interact with the sun and we interact with the particles, these particles are interfacing with our body because we are actually particles. So there's something about becoming, you know, we've heard about people being vegetarian and, you know, breatharian. What about a liquidarian? Where it's something about the liquid and re-encrypting of the liquid this year for the body. I mean, I, I feel this year is big for the body because, you know, that return to Atlantis was a lot about the architecture. We've been working on the architectural realm, the light body, to get some of this stuff, uh, these false matrices, the false spin points, you know, these things that have been installed like viruses into the earth. You know, the earth has been overrun 
with the vir- a virus a- in the terrain of the earth, almost like when you have a computer and all this stuff has been, uh, you know, malware and spyware and all this crap gets on your computer and you have to, you know, you have to clean it up. Well, we've been cleaning that up in the architecture. Now it's about cleaning it up on a deeper level, the way that architecture uh, interfaces with our physical body at a DNA and cellular level. This is finally, if somebody's had ancestral miasma, okay, like a miasm that's been, you know, you hear about the generational curses within the body, like something goes seven generations back, and why a certain dis-ease that a person had, they inherited it from their family of origin or this and that, or even emotional traits or, you know, mental traits or whatever these things are. These are all programs that have been installed even into soul bodies, into, say, over-soul bodies. And these things, we have the chance now for this to be um, removed, changed forever. I got a glimpse on, of this in July 17th of this past year, which was the galactic uh, New Year window. It was the rise of Sirius. I don't know if we talked about on the, that on the show, but there's something about how the the ancestral encryption is actually held in the blood, in the bone, in the muscle, in the fascia of the body, uh, in the liquid, say in the lymph fluid, And we hear a lot about, you know, reptilians and these different uh, guys that are not so nice. This is actually like the parasite that live within our gut. And we hear about the leaky gut, and we hear about all these things. And, you know, the mental body, which is the solar plexus. And I know I'm... um, I'm going all over the place with this, but I'm actually very excited about the changes that I feel are going to be happening to our physical body, and I feel that these next couple years are actually crucial to to really cleaning this up. You know, I I totally agree. It's something that, you know, it's a perfect addition to the end of the show here because um, a lot of my writing has been about this, what people are calling you know, either bringing in a light body in a, that's more of a physical light body or rejuvenation of the physical body or the perfected DNA template. And that does have a play in what we're here to do. And what I would like to do is I would like to put the intention out there that we do this in 2015. I mean, we've been talking about 2016 and 2017, 2023, and all these dates. And I say let's throw all the dates out the window and let's get let's heal our bodies and bring our DNA template back online. And that's really how we can fight um, what's happening to us, the control over us right now. Because if we aren't sick, we don't need any pharmaceuticals. If we're able to manifest from the background energy, we won't need money. We can create our own food. And these are things that we have done in the past before we're stripped of our powers and stuck into this um, this reincarnation system, into this matrix. So thank you so much for bringing that up because I do believe somewhere in my heart, down deep inside, that we will have perfected bodies once again. Yeah, uh, 2015 is the year to do it, and 2017 is the year to be that badass superhero because I feel we're going to have to be. So we have to heal our body if we're going to be the badass superhero because we're not doing the artificial intelligence gig. We're just not going down the technocracy road that they're pushing. You know, and then the other thing that comes up, you know, Remember when the Ebola was around and all this, and I knew when the stupid election was coming around that that would disappear. Well, now it's about hearing about the flu again. You know, it's like they're always up to the same shenanigans with, you know, the flu season and and blah, 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 and all this uh, stuff again. So, you know, it's time to beef up the immune system and keep strong and really don't go out unless we're like everybody's been saying, Rance said it, listen to the intuition of when to go out, you know, so you don't have to learn why you – uh, d- didn't go the other path, just to always be clear and to be listening and to be in the heart space and to be just to be open all the time. You know, I'm, I'm really digging what you ladies are, are, are saying right now. And, 
you know, what, with what Michelle was just saying too, you know, why can't this happen right now? It can. I, I, I definitely agree with that because time is just an illusion, uh, you know, and there's no reason why we can't make, you know, we don't have to wait for 2017, 2023, the end of uh, Pluto and Capricorn or whatever. We can make this world the way we want it right now. Now, just one quick uh, comment too. Um, you were mentioning about the rooster, and I was looking up what the metaphysical meaning of the rooster is, and it says, rooster is keenly aware of the surroundings within the physical and spiritual realms. It's time to open up the great mystery of the past uh, to find your hidden self. Rooster will enlighten your path to take notice of your hidden powers. So I thought that was pretty powerful. That is. It is, and I was gonna I was gonna segue with that too because a friend of mine sent me something. It also has to do with sexuality, watchfulness, and res- resurrection. And I am tired of the sexual energy and, and the misuse of sexual energy on this planet. You know, the siphoning, the misuse of how uh, p- beings are targeted to have this energy stolen. You know, so it's all about return to right for owner now of our energies. The watchfulness and is very important, the resurrection, and when the the crow came into the yard, I mean the the uh, cock-a-doodle-doo, the, uh, the rooster, I thought of the biblical story, <laughs> it's so funny when you think of these biblical stories and you undo the story, and one of the stories in the Bible talks about Jesus or Yeshua and how uh, Peter denied Christ. And he remembered that he did it after the cock crowed three times. So I was meditating on that, and I was thinking, well, what is, this just like came to me in a flash as I was listening to the rooster going, you know, and um, I was thinking about, well, the denial, well, the Christ force or the Christic energy or the crystalline energy, whatever you want to call it, is, is here as a force, and it's undeniable. It cannot be denied anymore. And also, Peter represents the rock, the Petra. And I was thinking, well, what are the rocks? The rocks, the rocks I like to work with are the silicon dioxide. It's the, uh, it's the clear quartz. And if our body's becoming more silicon-based, it's it's actually our particles within us that are crying out for resurrection. This body mm-hmm. wants to resurrect and remake itself because you know how when you cut yourself, it wants to heal. The blood coagulates to heal as a scab. If that's the case, it, why does the body age? It doesn't really make any sense, right? When the nervous system, you know, everything rebuilds itself. You have a, a stomach lining that rebuilds itself every seven days, and the whole, all the cells of the body turn over, what is it, every seven years? So it doesn't make any sense, really, that the body ages, except that there's been something installed here that's artificial to create aging, to create things like predator prey prey programs, victim victimizer programs, and if there were no more victims, guess what? These victimizers would have to go away. This would just not uh, be anymore. So we're not mm-hmm. victims. You know, we're we're waking up. We're uh, commanding our space. We're asking for return to right for owner all of our energies any energies that have been usurped or misused, you know, if we've taken energy by mistake, we give that back, and we are re-encrypting this physical body now. I mean, this is the year I'm seeing to template this, uh, the, the remaking of this physical body, you know, it's it's because ascension actually is embodiment. It's the God embodiment. It's the the particles embodied. It's not going anywhere else. It's bringing it here, and it's the embodiment of it within the physical. Yes, I think a lot of the New Age deception was making ascension as something like we were leaving here to go somewhere else into another dimension. But what we're actually doing, you know, that this is something that I've written about in a lot of the articles on N5D is we're actually raising our vibration to move our consciousness um, out of this reality because these things that are, you know, supposedly in control of the planet, I believe that they've, they're they losing control rapidly, but they can't exist in a higher vibration. And this is, this is how we're going to get out of this, and this is how we're going to heal ourselves. And so before, um, I thank you for bringing everything up. It's just amazing the 
conversation that we're having tonight is off the charts. I wondered if if you would please talk before we before we move on to my former co-host Larry Lockin. I was wondering if you would bring up a little bit about what kind of UFO activity you've been seeing lately. Well, I haven't actually looked too much in a, in a couple of weeks. Been so busy with other things, but I'm telling you, in November, uh, yeah, because we're in December now. Yeah, I was in Illinois for a little bit, and actually, it was really uh, some decent weather. You know, which was pretty amazing. We manifested that weather. But I'll tell you, the the past couple groups that we took out, there was some off the chart amazing uh, things, and it was so amazing and weird that the helicopters were coming in. You know, we also have this laser that we were, um, you know, playing with. But I've seen the plasmas, and we went up to uh, Brown Mountain, and I don't know if I talked about, oh, I think I talked about this on Elizabeth's show, how we mm-hmm. were seeing these, uh, you know, the, and, and it's funny because I'm talking about, you know, the plasma body, which is actually kind of what the Brown Mountain lights are. They're, they're orbs of plasma. And this one particular one actually had like a dancing figure within this orb, which was uh, pretty amazing. And I've also seen some colors through the goggles, which normally you're, you're only supposed to see green. So when you start seeing red or blue through the goggles, it's really quite strange. Now, Greg, what have you seen lately with the goggles? Unfortunately, nothing because when I turned them on, I, I nothing's coming up anymore. I don't know what happened. Um, I, I don't. Is, I don't know if the tube is shot on it or, Ooh, or what. Uh, I mean, have you changed the batteries? That's the first thing I did. Okay. Well, you yeah. know what? Uh, send me a message, and we will okay. talk with Mr. Mobius and try to figure out what's going on with them, okay? Because oh, he is be the expert in that in that department. Mm-hmm. So uh, he and I will discuss what's, what could be going on with them. Okay. Very awesome. Good. Well, Missy, I want to thank you so much. We have one more person hanging on the line. We've gone for two and a half hours now for this fabulous show, and I'm so glad that you were a part of it tonight. I want to thank you very much. Oh, I think Thank this you, has been Missy. great. I've been listening. It's been a fun show, and hopefully, oh, I just got to tell you, Michelle, I was out in your neck of the woods. Believe it or not, when we went to Springfield, Illinois, they actually uh, sent us through Dallas, Fort Worth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to land some of your energy here. That's awesome. Yeah, I yeah, thought that was, was funny. Your, your 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 old stomping grounds. Are you in Florida now or there right now? <laughs> Currently, right now, I'm in Texas um, just for a brief uh, stopover here. I still have a house for sale here, and uh, my son just turned 18, and so we're getting him, you know, up and ready to, you know, fly the coop, and uh, pretty soon I'll have my, my roots there in Florida with Greg, and he's just holding down the fort for me right now, so really looking forward to that, but I'll tune into your energy that you left here at the airport. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because it was kind of interesting riding that monorail because, you know, we were on that American Eagle, never been on that, because uh, American and U.S. Airways merged. And I don't know if you were there. Uh, I was there on the 12th, and I think it was like the 17th. I don't know if you were there those dates or you were in Florida. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. Actually, I think I was in, in Florida and, and New York, I, I think, on the, the 12th or the 17th. But, yeah. That's funny because I wasn't uh, wasn't here, but I am back now, and um, you know, just I appreciate you you calling in tonight, and you know, it's such valuable information that we're giving everybody, and um, I I know it's late for you as well, but um, you know, I wouldn't rather be anywhere else than here on New Year's Eve with people like you, Missy. So, uh, can you tell our our listeners how they could get in touch, in touch with you? Right now, the best way is because my life is still simple as far as websites and all these kind of things. But just uh, people can find me on Facebook. They can friend me there. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about Sue, TSU. That's another uh, thing. I'm I'm staying where I am because I don't want to learn something else. But my email is Hill, yeah. H-I-L-L, Knight, N-I-T-E, Vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, at gmail.com, Hill, Knight, Vision, at gmail.com, because I want to become telepathic. I really don't want to mess with social media and all this <laughs> stuff. It would just be me easier. Too. Let's just jump to the next level and forget all that other stuff. <laughs> 
And we will. And we will. Thank you so much, Missy. Thank you, you have Missy. Have a good rest of your New Year's. Okay. Love you guys. Love, love you, you too. too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take- okay. Bye. bye. Now, before we bring Larry on, Michelle, I just want to express my gratitude for all you've done for N5D and BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. Not only have you made a huge name for yourself in a short period of time, but you've done so much work behind the scenes that no one else sees except for me. So thank you. I, I truly do love everything about you. Oh, well, thank you, Greg. And, you know, it's not about, you know, recognition or, or making a name or, or having any followers because that is definitely not um, what I'm here to do. You know, mm-hmm. I realized five years ago that I had a mission and I sat down with the universe and I cried out in angst and said, you know, I don't want to be on this planet anymore if I can't find what I'm here to do and put me, put the, shine the path with the light and let me find um, I'm here to support and um, what I can best, um, you know, give my energy to. And I found it in you. And so I, I appreciate everything that you've done as well and giving me the platform to help bring other people on, like everybody we've had on the show tonight, to have a voice and give their opinion of what's happening because we have to all, you know, come together as one to figure out how to get through this. You know, if there's one thing that the Illuminati have on us is they're united against and they, you know, their program is to separate us. And uh, we have this illusion of separation and that we're all tied in together every human on this planet is tied in together mm-hmm. and when you can follow your heart and and follow the clues and the breadcrumbs that have put that your higher self and you work together to put in front of you 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 end up uh falling right in the where you need to be at the right time and that's how we met and that's how we came together to bring this um the new improved in 5d and you know, body, mind, soul, spirit um, has really taken off. You're posting several articles uh, a day on body, new articles on body, mind, soul, spirit. You know, like I said before, we have some reposts that are coming up on N5D, but you always have that new article every day on N5D, and you have the news, which is now the alternative news, which is now posted as a blog type post uh, WordPress. Uh, so it's really easy to follow. You can also click on the news page um, on N5D to pull up all the prior uh, day's news. And um, also a great um, thing that we have now is the subscription. You can go up to on the right-hand side page on either website and put your email address and have all of the articles and news dropped into your box every day. So if you're, you know, not by the computer um, and you want to to have a backlog or even if you want to use your email system as a sort and file, you can uh, have them emailed to you and then you can file them away in folders if you want to that way. So um, the new uh, N5D format is now user-friendly for all the mobile devices and um, that has been something that we've been lacking, for, that you've, you've had a problem with for several mm-hmm. years, and that now solved. And I'm so proud of you for, you know, taking the leap to, it's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility. And, um, you know, for you, I know that it's not really work because you have your heart into it. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, um, I know there's a gentleman that's waiting that would really like to talk to you tonight. And you as well. And with that being said, I'm going to bring on uh, Michelle's uh, former co-host, Larry Locken, coming to you from Oregon. Larry, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm doing great, you guys. I was sitting there listening to you guys, and I was like, I had several points I wanted to bring up, and then it just, you guys kept bringing up more and more information. And I just wanted to say, to start off with, that I love you too, and you know, Greg, I was listening to you before um, I even got on Facebook, and I just got this vibe that N5D was the wave of the future, and I just really enjoyed your shows. And I thought even that, man, you should be on Coast to Coast doing Nori's job and, you know, wake, waking up the nation in, ma- in mass. And, Michelle, I mean, you guys are just so amazing. The articles that you're whipping out, it's just pure consciousness flow. And it's just really an exciting time. I the, We're talking about 2014. 
I know Missy was a little bit about it just kind of being a year of body aches and stuff. And I had a period where I just had to leave Facebook for about a month or so. But, you know, I'm back and I love in 5D and, you know, things are just amazing right now. And I feel that, you know, 2015, we can make this happen. We don't need to wait till 2016. We can, you know, work on it now. And I'm just so appreciative to be a part of this, you guys. And thank you I so much. I got too. Thank you for Larry uh, is a member of a kajillion uh, different uh, groups on Facebook. A lot of uh, yes. a lot of Pleiadian uh, uh, Facebook groups, and uh, he he shared a lot of our articles. And uh, you know, I, I I I truly do appreciate all the sharing that you have done, and uh, I hope you can continue to do that for us as well. It's your help absolutely. To, it's to an honor. The world. It's- Exactly, exactly. We are all one in mo- moving towards this consciousness, and I just really appreciate in 5D, and it just it's great. And, you know, in the Pleiadians group, Greg, you know, the, your posts are just, the, you know, people love them, and people continue to chat and comment, and it gets people's minds thinking, and I just think it's amazing what's going on. I mean, it's just, you know, in, well, Larry, whipping out information you know, um, like it's no thing. Well, when, when you first started... Um, coming on to N5D Radio with me on the Cosmic Awakening show, you know, we were just green. We we, we hadn't, we've never done this before, you know, and, and you supported me and that was wonderful. I really appreciate everything, you know, you being there for me because I had, you know, I had these fears as well, you know, getting through the, the block in my throat chakra and I suppose that was probably from a lifetime, you know, where where I was probably killed for speaking my truth. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. you helped me work through that by being there, supporting me, and I appreciate that. And I know that you had a, you know, this time that you were talking about that you had to to get away and leave. And could you you tell our listeners, um, you know, what did you learn from that? And how did you... How did you work through the difficulty that you were having where you just felt like, oh, my gosh, you were just, you just had to make a change and you just had to leave for a while? What did you do? Did you use nature? Yeah, you know, a little bit. I started taking walks and doing that. But, you know, really what led up to that is I had been hitting it hard for about a year just you know, like we'd spoken about before, and I think when, you know, you and I and Greg did a show working 12, 14 hours a day, and I just didn't take any time to go out in nature, and I was just spending all my time doing this, and really, I just needed to get grounded, and what I really learned from this, though, is that I should have taken that time, you know, during the year here, you know, take a day off here and there, or a couple days off, and it just, you know, it came to a head, and what I learned is that I need to pace myself, and, you know, I can still enjoy some things in 3D, too. Like, I can still watch football or, you know, be involved in things like that, and I don't have to get caught up in the hype. But, you know, I just really learned to ground myself, you know, ground my root chakra, I think. It, it just it needed to be balanced, and, you know, I just you know, it's learned funny. To, I, Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because I, I've done the same thing recently, too. And what I've found is that I'm much more productive, even though I'm not working as many hours. I'm more productive when I am working. Um, in the past, and this is a great example, in the past, you know, I'd, I'd released a couple articles, you know, on BMSS, uh, Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit, and uh, one article on N5D. Now I'm putting out ten articles on N5D and uh, three or four or five articles on Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit every night, and I'm still good at getting out. I'm finding time to go out and maybe lay out in the sun here in Florida, which is something you don't see up there in Oregon. And uh, <laughs> no, or, yeah, I'm, I'm taking my dog for long walks now, and uh, you know he's getting me out to exercise and everything. So um, I'm, I'm finding more time away from the computer. But while I'm at the computer, I'm finding that I'm much more productive. Isn't that amazing? You know, it seems to me like it. Yeah, it's almost like you're whipping out three times the amount of work that you've been doing, and it seems mm-hmm. like it's more of a flow. And I, t- I totally get that. It's just amazing, and I don't know how it happens. I thought for a minute maybe they cloned you two. It's just, you know, you guys were just <laughs> whipping out hit hit article after hit article after hit article, and yeah, it's just amazing. And I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what else to say, but. Yeah, it's just in the articles are all great and it just seems to run smoothly and you know, I would just advise everybody to take some time away sometimes, you know, take a couple of days so it doesn't come to a head where you're just like, "Oh my god, I got to just drop this." 
you know, I got to yeah. the point, and I'll no. be quite honest, where the anxiety, I would just, man, I wouldn't even want to get on Facebook and look at things. It's just the anxiety for some reason. I just went through this point, and, you know, I guess it was a growing, you know, growing experience. And, well, here we are, you know, and onward and upward. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'd like to um, to announce, you know, I'm welcoming you as a, a guest co-host for the Cosmic Awakening show with Julian Wells on February 5th to discuss It would be uh, an honor, and I can't to wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I really so, vibe and, with him a lot, and so that'll be really great, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's okay. funny, too. That, that your name, the name of your show is Cosmic Awakening, and Michelle, you and I were talking about this earlier, of how I had the uh, Cosmic Awakening conference uh, earlier in the year, but it, one plus one never clicked with us. We were trying to find oh, no. a, a good name for the radio show, mm-hmm. and that was what we came up with without realizing that was our, also the name of our conference in Los Angeles. Well, and not only and that, but... Um, Helene and CJ, when they get together and have their show, it's called Cosmic Current. Mm-hmm. So when we came up with the name for the show, we didn't even take that mm-hmm. into account either. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you guys, isn't it amazing how you look back on it and then it clicks? You realize, okay, well, you know, if I would have put one and one together, it all makes sense after it unfolds. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like your subconscious Definitely. stores that, and then you realize, okay, well, hey, one plus one is two. <laughs> yep, that's just the universe saying, okay. <laughs> You're on the right path. Yeah, absolutely, you guys. Well, Larry, I would think for wrapping up our show with us tonight, I couldn't think of any any better person to bring on and and give my thanks to you for all the work that you've done for N5D. You know, our paycheck, um, it it, it sucks as far as monetary goes, but as far (laughs) as energy and love goes, you just wait. You just wait until you get your paycheck. Absolutely. Absolutely, thank you. And you know, I do got to say, and I don't want to try to sound like a suck up here, but I mean, talking to Br- Greg Prescott is amazing. I mean, just the fact that he knows who I am because you know I followed in five D for a couple of years, and like I said before, I was even on Facebook, and it's just it's amazing how life unfolds like that. And thank you guys so much for the opportunity. I love you both so much, and I hope you have a great New Year and all the all life's blessings that are due to you come your way. Thank you so much. You, well, thank you. You as well, brother. We'll have to do you another well. Google. We'll have to do another Google Hangout all three of us again sometime. Would love that. Talk about and you know what we could bring I was Sip on as well. You were talking earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we it need was it was great. Special shout out to Sip tonight in the in the chat room. Yeah. Yes, yes exactly. Special shout out to Sip. I love you, girl. Thank you for being on. Thank you for helping. And um, I don't want to get too personal, but okay, <laughs> it's all good. Well, go go have go have you a cocktail, Larry, to bring in the new year. <laughs> I do. I've got I've got a huge beer waiting to, as soon okay. as I get off the air here. So we appreciate you waiting so long <laughs> to join us tonight. Thank you. Awesome. Everything was perfect. Uh, thank you, brother. Good uh, night. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. Have a great night and a great new year. Thank you. Well. So for- yeah, we're just about at the end of our show. Um, is there anything you would like to say in closing? I would, if you don't mind. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, my website mm-hmm. um, that I I keep just to you know to keep a, a log of all of the articles that I've written and all of the uh, radio shows that I've had. It's called CosmicStarseeds.com, and I try to keep it up to date um, every now and then. I guess I'll maybe I'll update it every. T- weeks and pop everything on there. So if you're looking for any of the uh, Cosmic Awakening show um, shows, you can find them under the video tab on my website. And I'd like to just mention real quick, um, upcoming guests in uh, the early part of 2015 for my show is um, I have ET contactee Simon Parks tomorrow, and uh, he was raised by uh, a Manted family. He had early recollection of ET contact since a very young child, and he's actually a counselor, a politician in the UK, and he's um, been interviewed by um, many uh, high-level um, people like Alfred Weber, and uh, he has a lot of information to tell us from uh, an actual U- uh, ET family. So I'm looking forward to that show tomorrow, a special time, 2 p.m. Eastern for Simon Parks. Um, I'm really looking forward, and I think you're going to like this too, Greg, astrologer Carl 
Boudreau on oh, yeah. January 8th. Yes. Um, he's such a sweet, kind, wonderful guy, and he's very, uh, he, you know, he's a lot more intuitive than I think he gives himself credit for with his astrology. And I'm just really looking forward to his take on 2015 as well. So that's Thursday, January 8th at the regular time, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. And then, you know, I don't have a lot of channelers on my show, but I do have to say that there is a strong connection that I feel with Brad Johnson and Adronis that he channels, and I'm having him on January 15th. And then I have a really good friend that I met at Mount Shasta um, at when I met Lance White and uh, Andrew Bartzis, and that is Jeff Gates. And he was at the conference that I went to, and he was going to help me co-host um, a special um, a session with Lily on January 29th. And the, Lily is um, someone who's kind of um, keeping to anonymous, you know, but she has a lot of information to share that seems to resonate with me. So we're really looking forward to interviewing Lily together. And this will be Jeff's debut as a guest co-host on the Cosmic Awakening show. And, um, Every now and then I have this show called BMSS Radio, which is for body, mind, soul, spirit. And I like to, when I have an overflow and don't have a spot available, I like to use BMSS Radio on Sundays at 2 p.m. So if you have a voice that you'd like to share um, and, and put your energy out and you have something to say, please contact me on Facebook and we can get you in on BMSS Radio. I mean, folks, we have this platform here Greg has worked many years to build this up. I just walked in, you know, just walked into his life, and here I am, uh, a nobody, in. really, yeah, <laughs> for the radio show, yeah. So um, if I can do it, you can do it. You can come on, and and I'll, I'll, you know, I will get, I will get you on as a guest host, or I will interview you. Just contact me. We also have Friday and Saturday nights available on N5D Radio for. Um, someone special who would like to, you know, we'd like to have a younger generation, some of the indigo crystals, star seeds, rainbow children. If you have uh, a voice, um, we can start you out um, having a radio show with me and see how you feel and um, see what you have to contribute to, you know, your generation. So we'd like to save Friday and Saturday for something like that would be great. Um, but it is open. And listen, you know, Greg pays for this. He has to pay out of his pocket for this uh, premium three-hour show on Blog Talk Radio. So let's fill this up and let's get, you know, information out to people. And, Greg, I want to thank you for this fabulous, fabulous, flowing, wonderful energy show tonight. Aw, thank you. It, it's, wait. Oh, my God. You know what that is? <laughs> Those are bells and whistles. <laughs> Inside joke, folks. When I <laughs> when uh when I asked Michelle, uh, I told Michelle I, I'll I'll talk to you later on on the show. She she said I'll be there with bells and whistles. I said you better make sure you have them. So apparently those were them. Wow. Well, you know I'm not gonna sing for you, but I <laughs> you got the bells and whistles. So. Yep. That'll wrap up the end of our show tonight. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be your co-host. And that's so great to hear you back on the radio. And I look forward to some of your future Monday night shows on N5D Radio. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with uh, when I was talking with Jim, um, I've been on a hiatus from N5D Radio. And I'm going to be getting back into it a little here and there, not necessarily every Monday night, but definitely uh, this upcoming Monday night, I'll be bringing Jim Delacoli back on. And we're going to be talking about 2015 and beyond. So that's going to be fun. Um, also, uh, just be sure to uh, check back on N5D every day and BodyMindSoulSpirit.com every day because there's lots of new articles every day. I'm just going overboard on, on this, but there's just so much information. I, I'm so excited to share it with everyone. So um, check that out. And once again, I just want to express my sincere gratitude for everything that you've done for N5D and humanity in general, Michelle. Uh, and that goes out to everyone 
you know, you don't need to own a website or have a radio show. All you need to be doing is working in the best interest of humanity in whatever way you feel comfortable doing. We're all in this together, and whether you're listening to the show live or on a podcast or on the YouTube version, I just want to thank everyone who's helping to make this world a better place for all of us. Um, Absolutely. And thanks to all of our callers tonight, that, mm-hmm. you know, our guest callers that called in. Special shout out to CJ Miller. Um, mm-hmm. CJ wasn't sure if she was going to be able to, to join us tonight. And so we just want to send you our love and we thank you for having your radio show on Tuesday nights on N5D Radio. All right, Greg. Yes. I think I'm going to have an organic beer or an organic glass of wine or something. This has been such a <laughs> wonderful show. I have such hope. And I, I have such, you know, it just has raised my vibration so much. The raise the vibration of the planet, the, the and the universe, and get this show on the road. Sounds great to me. And uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to have. I'll probably have some uh, uh, Levi 9.0 uh, <laughs> pH water with uh, some ozone in it. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to wish everyone happiness, health, and abundance and all that's good for 2015 and beyond. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. And so on behalf of Helene, Michelle, CJ, all of our guests, I wish you an amazing 2015 and beyond. Namaste, everyone. Namaste.